Insurance Agent Gary Don Farah, Wilson Bearden Pharmacy, Magnolia Regional Medical Center, The Corner Clubhouse, Bo Moses Trucking, Columbia County Ambulance Service, Farmers Bank and Trust, Subway, Bridget's on the Square, HealthQuest Therapy, Offenhauser Insurance, Doctors Davis and Chambliss, McDonald's, Prince Pharmacy, Magnolia Glass and Mirror, Wentworth Place, Spindler Tire and Auto, Botcall Bank, Pizza Hut, at your service, Farm Bureau Insurance, Southern Medical Group, Jimmy John's, your local Edward Jones Investment Representatives, Rocket Fast Car Wash, Bailey's Body Shop, Magnolia Travel Center, your Magnolia Coca-Cola, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Mule Kick, and Jim Golden Ford Lincoln. Stay tuned for the SAU Mule Riders right here. What's better than a helping hand? How about one you can actually shake? At Farm Bureau Insurance, that's exactly what you get. There's a local agent like me in every county, and we're passionate about helping our local communities thrive. For me, it's more than a job. It's a calling. I'm Steven Zorsch. Call me at 234-1966 for an auto, home, or life insurance quote and learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. That's Steven Zorsch at 234-1966. Southern Medical Group has expanded its family and is pleased to announce that Dr. Chase Helm has joined their practice. Dr. Helm recently graduated from UAMS and specialized in family practice. Dr. Helm will be seeing patients in all age groups. Southern Medical Group will be accepting new patients. Please call 870-234-5995 to make your appointment. Southern Medical Group, our family taking care of yours. Visit smgarkansas.com. Let's be honest, you deserve the best. Jimmy John's in Magnolia makes freaky fast, freaky fresh sandwiches near you using only the freshest ingredients. Stop by and order delivery or pickup from the Magnolia location next to Walmart for a tasty sandwich today. And while you're at it, why don't you choose some chips or a cookie and a drink and make it a combo. Whether you're in store or in a delivery zone, we'll always make you a tasty sandwich. Become a reward member by downloading the Jimmy John's app. Jimmy John's Magnolia, open every day from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Within your investment portfolio, you may have a cash management account. This account can help pay for emergency expenses, short-term goals, or your everyday spending. You can use this account to pay for unexpected expenses or save for a short-term goal. And you can increase your comfort level in your portfolio because the funds in your cash management account...
hunt season, so they are certainly uh, certainly capable of getting hot and. Uh, you know, you never know. A pitcher can go out and spin a gym for seven-plus innings, or they may come out and fall flat on their face, but all of a sudden the bullpen picks it up. Once you get into postseason tournament baseball, uh, things tend to get a little quirky. And Washburn went to the championship game uh, against Central Missouri in uh – I can't remember if they beat them once. It seemed like they may have beaten them once. I know they beat them once in the tournament. seems like that uh, Central Missouri had to beat them twice for the championship. Yeah. But, uh, but hey, they're, they're a team that apparently is playing good ball right now. Yeah, playing good ball. And, again, it's, uh, you know, new life in the postseason. Uh, the, uh, again, on Casey Stewart on the mound for Washburn. They're 33-20 and 20 coming into this Central Region Tournament. Southern Arkansas 41-11. and 11. Let's take a break on our Farm Bureau post-game show, or our Farmers Bank and Trust pre-game show. Excuse me. Uh, it's been a while. Farmers Bank and Trust pre-game show. And again, welcome uh, from online and mobile banking to convenient hours and locations. Farmers Bank and Trust is easy banking for busy living. Find a Farmers Bank and Trust location near you at myfarmers.bank. We'll take a break and return. This is New Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. And on the mound tonight for the Ichabods, the right-handed pitcher, number 34, Casey Stewart. The athletic trainer for Washburn, Colton Schulte. Assistant coaches, Lane Harvey, Jordan Cooper, and Connor Crimmins. And head coach of the Ichabods, Harley Douglas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the non-starters for Southern Arkansas. Number four, Will Richardson. Number six, Jacob six, Martinez. Martinez. Number 12, Number Maddox, 12 Solomon. Maddox Solomon. Number 16, Number Evan, 16 Schrader. Evan Schrader. Number 17, Number Chance, 17 Bolter. Chance Bolter. Number 18, Number Cameron, 18 Lane. Cameron Lane. Number 19, Santos, Santos Sosa. Sosa. Number 20, Josh, Josh Walker. Walker. Number 21, Number Parker, Parker Abrego. Abrego. Number 22, Number James, James Janko. Janko. Number 27, Number Junior, Junior Torres. Torres. Number 28, Number Jackson, eight, Duke. Jackson Duke. Number 31, Number Wyatt, Wyatt Marr. Mar. Number 34, Number Brady, Johnson. Brady Johnson. Number 35, Number Johnny Vesevic. Number 37, Number Reed, Reed Osborne. Osborne. Number 44, Number Isaiah, Isaiah Haynes. Haynes. Number 45, Number Jack, Jack Liddell. Liddell. Number 46, Number Hayden, Hayden Hable. And now the starting lineup for the Mule Riders. Leading off in at second base, number 13, Chris Sutton. Batting second and behind the plate, number 32, Brett McGee. Batting third and at third base, number seven, Brandon Nickel. The cleanup hitter and at first base, number nine, Jacob Machuca. Batting fifth and in center field, number two, Ty Manning. Batting sixth, the designated hitter, number 24, Tucker Burton. Batting seventh and in left field, number three, Chris Lyles. Batting eighth and in right field, number 11, Connor Allen. And batting ninth and at shortstop, number 26, Riley Orr. And on the mound tonight for Southern Arkansas, the right-handed pitcher, number 23, Jeremy Adorno. The athletic trainer for Southern Arkansas, Bethany Barber, assistant coaches, Kobe Moores, Benton Schweinfurth, Jacob Caples, Adam Anderson, and head coach of the Mule Riders, Justin Pettigrew. Trust is easy banking for busy living. Find a Farmers Bank and Trust location near you at myfarmers.bank. Meal riders are getting ready to take the field against the Ichabods of Washburn University. 
The Ichabods 33 and 20. The Mule Riders are 41 and 11. The uh, lineup for the Ichabods, they'll lead it off with Cal Watkins, their shortstop, followed by the third baseman, Brett Ingram, hitting third. Quinn Waterbury, the first baseman. The D.H. Parker Dunn hits cleanup, hitting fifth, Zion Bolin, the right fielder. Then the second baseman, who is Tyler Clark Chaparelli, and we will probably butcher your name. I'm going to apologize to all of his relatives right now because we will probably be very hard on that name, which I'm sure won't be anything new. Probably yeah, to our listeners, yeah, yeah. they are very much aware that we can butcher a name. Yes, we're we're very good at that. Yes, Easton Bruce, the left fielder, uh, will bat in the seven hole. Cross Bay, the catcher, hits eighth, and hitting ninth, Connor Scott, the center fielder. Uh, Mule Rider lineup. Second baseman Chris Sutton leads it off. Catcher Brett McGee. Third baseman Brandon Nickel. Jacob Machuca, the first baseman, hits cleanup. Center fielder Ty Manning. DH Tucker Burton. Left fielder Chris Lyles. The right fielder Connor Allen. And the shortstop Riley Orr. On the mound for the Mule Riders, Jeremy Adorno. And on the mound for Washburn is Casey Stewart. So let's take one quick break. Final meeting with coaches and the umpiring crew. And there will be a four man umpire crew here at Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field and Coach Pettigrew explaining the uh, what's inbounds, what's out of bounds, all that kind of stuff, the ground rules here at Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field. We'll take another quick break, and we'll come back with the first pitch. This is Mew Rider Baseball in Magnus Country, 99.1. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, the experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. The nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. Your locally owned and operated Domino's is open. Domino's is open for carryout at the drive through and delivery. Domino's has contactless options for delivery as well as carryout. Call Domino's in Magnolia at 870-234-4141 or order online at dominoes.com. Domino's is open 1030 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 1030 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Domino's on East Main in Magnolia. Thank you for shopping all local businesses. Your husband is pretty handy to have around. He makes the world's best mac and cheese. He's in the Tickle Monster Hall of Fame. <laughs> and he can teach anyone how to throw strikes. But a busted pipe in a basement full of water? Honey, I think we need a plumber. Is a little out of his league. That's where a homeowner's policy from Shelter Insurance comes in handy. We'll help get your house back in order and your husband back to what he does best. <laughs> Ask shelter agent Gary Don Farah about Shelter's home insurance options. Locally owned and operated, Wilson Bearden Pharmacy now offers medical synchronization so that you can pick up your meds on the same day each month. They also offer free delivery in city limits. Vaccines for shingles, pneumonia, and COVID-19 are also available. Need a gift? Check out Wilson Bearden's variety of knives, flags, girly girl tees, and purses. Stop by and see Ivy Moore and her team at Wilson Bearden Pharmacy, 134 North Washington, serving Magnolia since 1945. Magnolia Regional Medical Center is excited about the addition of orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Kevin Rudder. Dr. Rudder grew up in South Arkansas and has been practicing for the last 20 years in Hot Springs. Dr. Rudder provides full orthopedic services with specialization in joint replacements. Also sports medicine and sports injury and orthopedic trauma including breaks and fractures. Referrals or appointments are accepted. Call the Magnolia Surgical Clinic at 870-235-3200. The Mule Riders and the Ichabods in the first round of the NCAA Central Region Tournament here at Southern Arkansas University at Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field as Jeremy Adorno getting warmed up for the Mule Riders to face the uh, Washburn University Ichabods. Like I said, they went to the championship game in, uh, in in their conference tournament against Central Missouri. They beat them once in that tournament, 15 to 13, and then in the finals, Central Missouri had to beat them twice, and they did 
uh, 16, 13, and 10 to 5. But the Ichabods have, have shown they can score some runs. Yeah, they've gotten hot late. And again, Central Missouri, definitely one of the top teams in the nation, along with the Mule Riders. So Washburn coming in hot and making a run at their conference tournament. Pretty dangerous uh, number seven seed that SAU is going to take on today. What a game, the, the first game today. And they thought, you know, having a 2 o'clock start and 6 o'clock start that uh, no way you can not get started on time. And it was looking like, well, we got to start work. We are starting a little bit. They ended up having to do some ground groundwork between games and all that. So we're starting uh, about 22 minutes late right now. So not bad. Yeah, not a little bad. better not, than not the, bad after what we saw at the Great American Conference. Yeah, well, they had three hours and 15 minutes scheduled between games. That uh, that did not work out real well. I don't know that there was any game in that tournament that was played that was under three hours yeah. and 15 minutes. Well, especially when and you got to add 45 minutes. Correct. For in between games. Looks like a door nose. But, hey, since we won the tournament, I'm all for keeping it the yeah. exact same yeah. way. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was just, uh, yeah, I was kind of worried about that going single elimination there at the end because if you lose one game. But anyway, they did it. And it is double elimination here in the regional and, uh, and, and, and then in the super regional. Whoever wins each of the sub regionals. They get together at the higher seed um, in in this regional. If Central Missouri was to get beat, it would be a year if SAU wins this one. Uh, they play two out of three, and then the winner of that advances to the national tournament in Cary, North Carolina. Adorno's ready on the mound for Southern Arkansas, and leading it off for the Ichabods, Cal Watkins, shortstop. He's batting 292. Three home runs, 29 runs batted in. We will also pass along to you Ichabod fans that we are the we are the home radio crew, so uh, we might we might show a homerism or two this evening. Adorno ready. Works from the stretch. The pitch comes down low for ball one. Again, Watkins will be followed by Brett Ingram, the third baseman. Quinn Waterbury, the first baseman. And if anybody gets on the cleanup man is Parker Dunn. Pretty good crowd here, but it would, it would probably be better except Magnolia High School's got graduation tonight. A lot of other folks getting ready for the Magnolia Blossom Festival, our big festival every year, which is tomorrow and Saturday. So a lot, a lot of folks doing a lot of work tonight, too. Maybe they got the radio on. Here comes a 1-0 pitch from Adorno. Fastball in there for a strike. Yeah, a lot going on in Magnolia this weekend. I think most of the teams... Ended up uh, getting hotel rooms in El Dorado because that was the closest spot available with the Blossom Festival going on, along with graduation. And I think they're all I think they're all in El Dorado. That's where the the motels were reserved for these teams. One ball, one strike to Watkins. Adorno's pitch, foul back. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, there's a lot going on in Magnolia. A lot of folks. Um, the, the Magnolia Blossom Festival is always. The third weekend in May, and the Central Region Tournament is always the third weekend in May. So it always always conflicts. It's kind of nice to be at home. So yeah, get to get to enjoy a little of the Magnolia Blossom Festival on Saturday. That's the main day, Saturday, Friday afternoon, and Saturday. One ball, two strikes. Adorno's pitch, a little outside with that one. Count goes to two balls, two strikes. Should bench of winds blowing a little bit out towards left center. We've had strong winds blowing out of south all day. It's supposed to keep blowing tonight and tomorrow, so it's going to be blowing out all weekend, it looks like. We've got, got a little, little chance, although they, they lessened it on Saturday of rain. Saturday night, a very good chance of rain. Two balls, two strikes. Adorno comes with another. That's pulled right to the first baseman, Machuca. On two hops, he'll step on the bag for out number one. So that takes care of Cal Watkins, and we bring Brett Ingram to the plate. To the plate, batting 365, he's got 11 home runs, 45 runs batted in. Comparing the two teams, Mule Riders this year batting 314 as a team, the Ichabods 301. Power wise. Washburn, 73 home runs. SAU, 94. Doubles, New Riders, 121. 
Washburn 113, so similar numbers. Numbers a little higher for SAU, but not just by a whole lot. The pitch to Ingram, fouled off at the plate. Yeah, Dorno there, like a off-speed pitch, and had the hitter out a little bit in front. Adorno, when that when the breaking pitch is working, yeah, and the fastball, and he can get them both over, he is mighty tough. Yeah, we've seen him already. Fourteen starts, fourteen wins, so it's hard to uh, to do much better than Mister Adorno has done. I'll say he's pretty tough on a bad yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. No balls, one strike. Here's the pitch. That's off the fist. That'll get over the shortstop and out into left center field. Yeah, not hit particularly well, but it was hit in a very good spot as that one just kind of looped over the head of the Mule Rider shortstop, Riley Orr. First baseman, number 45, Lesson number one in broadcasting, keep the keep the praise to a minimum it's because it's, as soon as you do, at least you only hit a single. As much praise as we heaped on the right. I'm surprised he didn't hit home run. Didn't leave the yard. Quinn Waterbury to the plate. For Washburn, batting 333, seven homers, 27 driven in. Crowd not making much noise yet. Here's the pitch. It's low and away, and it gets away from McGee as that pitch was in the dirt. And down to second base goes Ingram on the wild pitch. Yeah, as McGee was trying to scamper and get to it, I think his feet went out from under him as well. And at that point, he had absolutely no shot at getting the base runner. So, man, it's second with one out. That hurts your double play chances. Yeah, very, very much so. So the shortstop standing behind second, a line drive to Riley Orr at second. Yeah. Could, could lead to two, depending on how far Ingram is off the bag at second. Adorno takes a couple of peaks back there. Now the pitch, and that's low. So two balls, no strikes to Quinn Waterbury. Parker Dunn, the DH on deck for uh, Washburn. Yeah, Waterbury, good size, 6'4", 235. He looks pretty imposing. That left-hander, left-handed batter's box for the Ichabods. We're in the top of the first inning, just getting underway. One on, one out. The 2-0 pitch, fastball, swing and a miss. Blew that one past him. He was, he was raring to... Take a cut, though, and he missed it. Go ahead and get the strike out here, and the double play doesn't matter as much. Though, unfortunately, a hit to the outfield may score the first run of the ball game. Over in the other sub-regional, Augustana, a winner over Minnesota State, 10-9. First game of, uh, of that sub-regional. Two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Outside, three and one. They, uh, Augustine and Minnesota State just squared off against each other. Minnesota State beat them in the championship game for their tournament. Yeah, and I think played in the semifinals as well, didn't they? they I know they've matched up, I think, yeah, three people. times in the last four games yeah, now. They, yeah, they've played a lot. But Augustana edges them by one run today. Central Missouri and Washita Baptist from the Great American Conference squaring off right now. Pitch up and away for ball four. Well, sets up the double play again. That's true. Kind of an odd proposition. Do we actually root for Washita Baptist tonight? Or I don't, know if I, I don't know if I have the ability to do that. I'll just be honest. I was standing next to someone you know earlier when Henderson State and Northeastern were playing and said, you know, I just can't root for Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's a former Mule Rider player. Uh, used to play football here at SAU. And now he wears a badge. I think you know who I'm talking I about. Now, now it's, <laughs> yes, I've connected all the dots now. <laughs> the pitch to Parker Dunn on the way in there for strike one. Started him off with an off-speed pitch. Dunn hitting 291. He has 17 home runs, 59 runs batted in. Leads the team in both of those categories. Don't make a mistake to this guy. Your riders have the shift to the right side on the infield. Not as much in the outfield. The pitch. And he fouls it off to the left side. That's going to get out of play. Yeah, good 
Brandon Nickel was going to make absolutely sure. He went all the way to the brick wall leaning over, but that ends up being out of play by probably six or seven feet. So the count 0-2 on Parker Dunn. Dunn bats from the left side. The, the pitches come in from the dugout. They send a sign, and then the Muir Rider pitchers check the wristband so everybody knows what the pitch is. 0-2 delivery coming again to Dunn after a check of second. Here it comes. That's lifted to the left side. That'll get out of play as well. All right, we got a, we got a, we got a, we got different looking live stats there. Yeah, we do. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, uh, this may take a while to learn the live stats. <laughs> Too many different versions of live stats out there. Adorno from the stretch. We'll try another 0-2 pitch here after. Dunn has fouled off a couple. Here it comes, and that one's hit deep. Out to right center field. Manning going back at the wall, over the wall, in right center field. So Washburn strikes first. A three-run bomb, home run number 18 for Parker Dunn. Yeah, even more impressive doing it on an 0-2 pitch as that was over the plate, and he just launched that one. That was... That's a big hit. Two strikes. He was not cutting down his swing. He kept the power up, and just like that, Washburn's up three zip. Still one out. Zion Bolin, the hitter for Washburn. 329 hitter, six homers, 30, uh, 36 runs batted in. Dunn listed at six foot 200. He looked about. 6'6", six, six, 260 yeah, right there it was the way he hit that one. Line drive all the way out of Goodhart Field. Adorno's pitch. Breaking pitch in their first strike. Inner part of the plate to the right-handed hitting Zion Bolin. Well, the Mirror Riders knew they had to score to win this thing, so they're just going to have to score a few yeah, more. Just spot them three runs and get the offense going. The pitch comes. Another, there's another off-speed pitch in there for a strike-breaking pitch. Well, I think I think that all the praise we gave Adorno earlier, I think that one just came a few pitches later. Yeah, that home right. run. I said, said then I was surprised that it, he didn't hit it out of here, but uh, a couple batters later, actually. But no doubt about that one from Parker Dunn. No balls, two strikes to Bowling. Adorno's pitch checked his swing, missed low and away. Yeah, the good news is with the wind blowing out towards left center, I would certainly be surprised if three runs wins this game. Yeah, like I said, the wind's supposed to blow all night, so I don't think we're gonna gonna get any any uh, rest from that wind. We'll see them. A ball and two strikes. A door no set, and he comes with another. That's in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes to Zion Bolin. Well, Adorno, a little, little of this has to do with uh, with wildness. He, he walked a batter. He's gone deep in some counts here. He threw a wild pitch earlier. Uh, so he's a little bit on the wild side here in the first inning. So he's human is what we're saying. Yeah. 2-2 two, two count to Bolin. Adorno's pitch. Swing and a foul at the plate. Stays 2-2. Watch two, two. them get a strike out here just to kind of boost the confidence back up. Tyler Clark Chaparelli is up next. Going Chaparelli or Chaparelli? Chaparelli, according to the pronunciation guide that they gave us. Chaparelli. Okay. Two balls, two strikes. Now, sometimes sports information directors don't necessarily yeah. get it right on more the estimation. Another 2-2 two -two pitch from Adorno. Bowen looked at it outside. Count goes full three and two. Boy, going up, yeah, going up 0-2 with this at bat. You do not want to see a walk here. Pitch comes in from the dugout.
It's a three ball, two strike count. Yeah, no, no more walks. Those have a way of uh, coming back to get you. 3-2 pitch from Adorno on the way. And a swing and a miss down on strikes. Goes Bowling to a fastball pass. Yeah, just what the doctor ordered there. Go ahead, come back, get the strike out, and see if you can get out of the inning and keep the damage at three runs. Tyler Clark Chaparelli at the plate. Surely his uh, teammates don't use that full name. You think Chappy? Chaps. How about Chaps? Okay. <laughs> no, mama, mama may not like that. Well, let's see what we can do here. He bats from the right side. Adorno's pitch to him. Up and in for ball one. Chaparelli hitting 291. Seven home runs, 37 runs batted in. Three nothing. Washburn are in the top of the first inning. We're going to be here a while. We hope. I don't fear we'll get out of here before 10 o'clock. 1 0 pitch on the way. Tried to check, but he went around. So 1-1 one, one to Chaparelli. Yeah, 40 with the off speed. Chaparelli thinking fastball and just couldn't quite hold off once he uh, missed his guess on the pitch that was coming. Easton Bruce, their left fielder, due up next. Hopefully they can end it right here with Clark Chaparelli. The pitch coming. Fastball. That's a strike. Got knee high right down. Uh, looked like caught a lot of the plate. Yeah. I think he just surprised him with the fastball. After that off-speed pitch, that fastball looks that more impo- that much more imposing. So it's a ball and two strikes to Tyler Clark Chaparelli. Jeremy Adorno on the mound. Three runs in. Two out. Bases empty. One-two pitch. Looked at a breaking pitch low. Evens the count, two balls, two strikes. Boy, good pitch, though. Almost got the hitter to chase there. Oh, I heard a chappy, by the way. Did you? Yes, from the Washburn crowd. I heard it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> two balls, two strikes. So hope we not. We don't hear another cheer. Adorno's pitch. That's lined out to left field. That's down. For a base hit, a two-out single from Tyler Clark Chaparelli. Or Chappie. And Easton Bruce now will hit. 342 hitter, two home runs, 19 runs batted in. He's the seventh man to bat in the inning against Jeremy Adorno. We don't expect this when Jeremy Adorno's on the mound for the mule run. No, not at all. They've got Bruce Easton listed as hitting right-handed. Maybe he's a switch hitter. Got him listed as throwing left and batting right, but he steps in. Left-handers, batter's box here. Adorno is ready. The pitch comes. That's lined up the middle. That's the base hit. The runner around second. Chaparelli on the way to third. He'll slide in safely head first without a throw. Yeah, that was kind of a soft line drive, not hit really well, but again in a good spot just so Chris Sutton not able to quite get there and track it down. And the ball was hit slowly enough. Ty Manning had to come charging in from center, and that allowed Chaparelli to go from first to third. Adam Anderson, the Mule Rider pitching coach, going to go out and talk with Jeremy Adorno. Like we said, we're not used to seeing this when no. Jeremy Adorno is on the mound, so it's kind of a kind of a shocker to see a team come out and uh, and hit him that well. They say with with a good pitcher, you want to get him early, and that's what uh, that's what Washburn is doing. And they they they've got two on the bases right now with two out, and they're they're hoping that Cross Bay can drive in at least one of those. We'll see what happens. Let's see if Adorno can settle down here again. You don't feel like three runs is going to win this ball game, but certainly want to see Adorno settle down, get out of the inning, and see if the bats can get hot for the Mule Riders. By the way, I would say Cross Bay is a pretty good catcher's name. It just sounds like a catcher. I don't know why. Kind of 
like your Oklahoma Baptist guy? Was it Bo Dallas? Yeah. The baseball yeah. day, the pitcher. I yeah, I know that yeah. dude could pitch. Still can, I guess. Well, the, the conference is over. And Adorno ready to, to pitch to Cross Bay, the eighth man to bat in the inning for Washburn. He's a 238 hitter, five homers, 28 runs batted in. The pitch is a strike off speed pitch at knee high. Boy, long list of signs by the coach at third base. You wonder if they may try to entice a throw from the Mule Riders to second, try to score the base runner from third. So, got to be on alert here. Adorno's next pitch, breaking pitch, line to the left side. That's a base hit. That'll drive in another run. Yeah, that one hit pretty well, just right between the hole at short and third, and Washburn strikes again. Bruce stopped at second. Four runs have scored. On top of the first against Jeremy and Arnold, they're batted around. Connor Scott will come to the plate. And in fact, Washburn's starting pitcher, Stewart, had to go out to the bullpen and get a few throws in to stay loose. This has been a long top half of the first. Last time that Adorno pitched was first game of the Great American Conference Tournament, which was 12 days ago. So I don't know if the rest, you know, he was used to pitching every week, so that's been a little over a week. There's a swing and a miss, strike one to Connor Scott. Yeah, just a little bit off. And again, a couple of these hits have not been hit hard, but there are a couple others that have been hit right on the screws. I would say the home run ball was hit yes. pretty well done. <laughs> well, the two, of Parker done. But like you said earlier, the two walks certainly never help. The pitch from Adorno. Bounced it up there, and that'll advance the runners to second and third. So again, some wildness from Adorno. And then having to come in, and then they're, they're, they're able to put that ball in play. That again puts not one, but two base runners in scoring position, so makes the base hit even that much more damaging here. Five hits in the inning, plus the walk given up by Adorno. Connor Scott, bang 277. He's got six homers, 27 driven in. The 1-1 pitch from Adorno is coming. And it's in there for a strike on the outside corner. Took a little off of that one. Come on, Jeremy. Let's get one more right here. Get out of this inning and kind of regroup yeah. a little bit for the for the second. But Jeremy has thrown, I don't know that they're keeping a pitch count here, but he's thrown a lot of pitches in this first inning. Odds of a complete game, I would say, would be pretty slim. The one-two pitch is high. It's two and two. Deuce is wild here in the first inning. I don't know. It looks like he's kind of showing a little. They got to be frustrated. Oh, yeah, I'm down. sure. Scott steps back in. Dorno looks into his catcher, Brett McGee. The 2-2 pitch from Jeremy Adorno. Take a look at second first. Now it comes. Breaking pitch. No, it's a fastball up high and swinging and missing as Connor Scott strikes out to end the first inning for Washburn University. They scored four runs in the inning on five base hits. There were no errors and two men left on base. 4 nothing. Washburn after a half inning. This is Mule Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. You. It's time to step up to the plate at the Corner Clubhouse on the Magnolia Square. Remember, it's a short stop away to experience delicious pulled pork smoked in-house, baked potatoes, burgers, a full bar, and the best ribeyes cut in-house over an open flame. The Corner Clubhouse is open Monday through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Don't strike out. Satisfy your cravings with a grand slam at the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington in Magnolia. 
Hiring someone you trust can be the hardest part of owning a business. At Bo Moses Trucking, trust has been at the top of our list. When you need to get precious cargo from one place to another without worrying about damage, delays, or lost freight, Bo Moses Trucking is the one to count on. Based in Magnolia, Arkansas, since 1999, we have the resources and equipment to take care of all your flatbed freight hauling. Visit us on Facebook or call 870-234-2803. Bo Moses Trucking. Trust us to go the distance. the top half of the first inning. Let's see if the Mule Riders can answer in the bottom half of the, of the first. The Mule Riders will send up Chris Sutton, Brett McGee, and Brandon Nickel here in the bottom half of the first. Casey, Casey Stewart on the mound for Washburn. 5-2 and two record, 6.38 ERA. This is his 16th start of the year. He's pitched 72 innings, given up 74 hits. 62 runs, 51 earned. He's walked 32, struck out 77. Opponents batting 264 against him. First pitch, he has hit a mile, but he's pulled oh. foul off the bat of Chris Sutton. Otherwise, he would have uh, Been a lead put a run on the board. Yeah, right on the first pitch. Yeah, it ends up slicing foul. That was hit a ton. And let's uh, see if we can move that over a few feet to the right and tee it up again. Another to Chris Sutton. He pulls it to the left side. That's past the diving third baseman out in the left field. Sutton a big turn at first base. He will stop right there. Good start for the Mule Riders offense. Sutton absolutely hammered the foul ball out of the stadium and then a sharply hit single to get things started for the Mule Riders on offense. Casey Stewart, big fella out there. He's 6'5", 260 from Wichita, Kansas. Casey Stewart, right-hander. Brett McGee steps in for SAU. 293 hitter, 13 homers, 64 runs batted in. Ian Nickel, who's on deck, tied for the team lead in RBIs. The pitch comes. He checked his swing, took a strike. Brandon Nickel, third baseman, hits next. Hitting cleanup, first baseman Jacob Machuca. Center fielder Ty Manning after that. Then the D.H. Tucker Burton, left fielder Chris Lyles, right fielder Connor Allen, and the shortstop Riley Orr. Sutton big lead over at first base. It was a little bigger earlier. Now he comes off as the pitch comes in. A fastball in there for a strike to Brett McGee. Brett thought it was in or maybe uh, down. Agree. Yeah, he did not agree with the call on that one. Say that's a pretty good fastball coming out of the hand of Casey Stewart. So he's ahead of Brett McGee. No balls, two strikes. Stewart ready. The pitch. And he pulls that one. He got in front of that one. And that one had home run distance, but he pulled it foul. So Sutton hit a home run distance foul ball to the left side. And McGee now does it to the right. If we just straighten these out just a little... We need a little bit wider field. That's, that's exactly right. Count still 0-2 on Brett McGee. Yeah, I don't think four runs is going to win this game. No. Here's the pitch. Checked his swing. Took it up high. I'd like to have the radar gun on him. That's a pretty decent fastball. Trying to get McGee to chase that one up in the zone. They did appeal to the third base umpire. See whether McGee went around. He did not. No, it wasn't, wasn't even close. That doesn't always mean anything. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, two strikes. I saw one that got rung up. I don't know if he was rung up or not, but he, they called it a strike on a check swing in the first game today. That I didn't think he took it off his shoulder. There's one. Pull through the right side. Sutton had to dodge it as he was going first to second. Now he's on his way to third. Here comes the throw in. Head first slide, and he is safe. So McGee singles to right. Mule Riders have runners at first and third with nobody out. Yeah, back-to-back -back doubles to start, and both Sutton and McGee put the bat on the ball twice really hard. A couple of foul home runs, but then they want to come back and lay some singles, singles into left and right field. Sutton had to kind of skip the rope over yeah, there did. a little bit. Lucky, because if you get hit by that, you're out. 
Yeah, he did a, he did a good job. He had to, had to high step over it. Now Brandon Nickel, the near rider third baseman to the plate. He bats 320 with 11 homers and 64 runs batted in. Yeah, Nickel could make this a one-run game quickly. And the pitch off speed outside, ball one. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, Nickel takes the RBI lead here. He and McGee tied at 64 apiece. And I'm sure Brent McGee standing on first base wouldn't mind He would not. He would, he would hand over the belts right now. Pitch on the way. He pulls that one foul. We're on the third base side. The Ichabods are in the third base dugout. The Mule Riders in the first base dugout. So the Ichabods have the shade right now. Mule Riders, this is the Mule Riders' home field. And for folks listening in that don't know, and first they always occupy the first base dugout. Now, I don't know if there's a stipulation in the regional. There's a foul back. I'm not sure either about. I'm trying to remember which dugout was Hen was Henderson in. Henderson was the home team. I got in late, so I'm I not. Think, no, they're in the third base dugout, so probably I would think the Mule Riders would uh, would get to use their dugout when they're playing in a game, whether they're the home team or not. You know, different different teams, different parks are different where they have the home plate, the home team, and the where they're in the third or the first base dugout. One two pitch down in the dirt. And McGee almost took off yeah. second base, but he put on the brakes pretty quick. The catcher, Bay, kept it out in front of him, and uh, McGee may have been toast down there if he had taken off. May have, but you also had Sutton down there at third base, so it would have been interesting to see what uh, Washburn decided to do there. I think in the end there he decided, let's see what we can do with the bat. Two balls, two strikes to nickel. Jacob Machuca's on deck for SAU. 2-2 pitch on the way, and that's lifted high in the air. After right center field, that's carrying well. Center fielder going back in the gap, and he finally has to dive for it, and he makes the catch. A tag at third. That'll bring in a run from third base, and that was a heck of a diving catch by Connor Scott, the center fielder. It was, but it was also an awkward-looking play. I don't know if he lost the ball or just misjudge how misjudge how far is going to be hit but he almost got burned on that one. probably should have been a relatively easy put out well i thought it was and i think the wind maybe caught it a little bit and maybe they're late and blew it back where he had to had to make a leap to try to come up with it and he did have to cover some ground but uh yeah he ended up making a heck of a leaping catch so the runner came in from third. McGee still at first. One man out now. Machuca at the plate for SAU, batting 336. Ten home runs. First pitch off speed. Misses outside ball one. Machuca with 37 driven in. Later on, got our Magnolia Regional Medical Center mid-game summary. A service of Magnolia Regional Medical Center and the Magnolia Women's Center, your hometown provider for comprehensive women's health. Dr. Scow and his team provide a full range of gynecological and surgical care. Call 235-3608 for an appointment. Pachuca swings and fouls one back out of play. Yeah, chase that one. One ball, one strike is the count. Winner of this one will play Henderson State in the 6 o'clock game tomorrow. The loser will face uh, Northeastern in the 2 o'clock game. Stewart ready. 1-1 one, one pitch. And a swing and a miss at a fastball. 1-2. and two. That just blew that one by Machuca staying on the outer half. SAU trying to get, get some of those four runs back. They got one back. It's four to one. It's North, or excuse me, uh, Washburn batted around at the top of the first inning. If you join us late, shift onto the right side. The pitch comes, and that's pulled back up the middle. That's going to get through thanks to the shift. The runner from first, McGee, on his way to third. So a single off the bat of Jacob Machuca, and I think if they don't have the shift on, he probably the second baseman might have got that one and. And, and maybe a double play. Yeah, it may have been, but a good job by Machuca with two strikes, cutting down on the swing, going back up the middle. And just a good piece of hitting. Good job by the Mule Rider catcher, Brett McGee, going from first to third as well. 
Three singles in the inning for SAU. One sacrifice fly. First and third. One out. It's four to one. Washburn with the lead. Stepping in, Ty Manning. He bats 345, second on the team in hitting. Seven homers, 44 runs batted in. The pitch comes in the dirt. Runner from first on his way to second base as the catcher, Bay, just couldn't get the ball picked up. That good heads up base running by Jacob Machuca to work himself into scoring position. It's a wild pitch, and I don't know if Bay was actually ever going to throw it or not because he had to to worry about... uh, McGee over at third, but he just he tried to barehand it. I think that was going to be his only shot. Yeah. Because it, it went in the dirt and came off the catcher and rolled out toward the mound a little over to the third base side and just couldn't couldn't get it picked up. So second and third with one out for Manning. The pitch. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball down low. Yeah, one ball, one strike. Full time Manning on that pitch. He was way out in front looking fastball. I think Ty Manning was trying to go ahead and tie this one up. I'd be very happy with just a base hit. Same here. That would bring in two. We're only in the first inning. we got a long way to go in this one. From the looks of it, you are exactly right. 1-1 one, one pitch is high. 2-1. and one. Tucker Burton, the Mule Rider designated hitter, is on deck. Tucker hit a couple two weekends ago at Hot Springs that still have not landed, so I'd like to see him with an opportunity with men on base. Two on pitch. Swing and a miss at a fastball. Evens the count. Two balls, two strikes. Tucker had to serve a two-game suspension for getting ejected after a called strike three, and he... There was some pent-up anger. Yeah, he drew a line in the in the dirt, and the umpire tossed him after the game, a post-game ejection. Had to serve a two-game suspension. First pitch. was the first pitch, first right? Pitch. He hit a mile. There's a foul back that's going to get out of play. He hit it up over right center up at Majestic Park at Hot Springs, and there were railroad tracks beyond that. Had to, had to have cleared the railroad tracks, too. He hit that thing a country mile. And the second one he hit was kind of in the same area that was just to the right of the scoreboard. Otherwise, it was going to clear the scoreboard and the train tracks. So, needless to say, he has home run power when he gets to the plate. What we're trying to say is we'd like to see him come to the plate in this inning. That's right. (laughs) He's standing on deck. Two balls, two strikes to Manning. Stewart's pitch. And that caught the outside corner for strike three. So Manning called out on strikes. Yeah, good, good pitch there. Surprise Manning and good location as that one dropped in right over the outside corner. So Tucker Burton will come to the plate. Tucker batting 312. Leads the team in home runs with 16. He's driven in 56. Left-handed designated hitter for SAU. Runners at second and third with two men out. And this is a big at bat in this game. Yes. It's early, but you're right. It's a big one. First pitch to Burton. He took one inside, almost hit him. One ball, no strikes to Burton. Chris Lyles on deck, who was the most valuable player of the Great American Conference Tournament. Yeah, kind of pick your poison here. Lyles was as hot as anyone could be during the conference tournament. A ball and no strikes to Burton. Stewart off the full line, the pitch, and boy, Burton took a big swing, but he missed it for strike one. One ball, one strike. Yeah, not surprisingly, they're working Burton outside with the fastball on that pitch. Probably not going to see a fastball middle in unless it's a just a complete and total mistake. Burton stepped out as Coach Pettigrew gives his, his signs, coaching third base. 1-1 one, one pitch, and Burton looked at it low. Off-speed pitch, down low, 2-1. and one. I got the shift on on Mr. Burton. The shortstop playing almost directly behind second base. Second baseman pulled around quite a bit. Again off the line, 2-1 pitch. 
Burton lifts it in the air to the left side. Long run for the left fielder. It's going to be in foul ground. Bruce, will he get there? Does not as it drops in the bullpen out in left field. The bullpen down there is just in foul ground down along the left field line. You know, thankfully the shift was employed as the left fielder was shaded very heavily towards center field and couldn't quite track that one down. A count, two balls, two strikes to Tucker Burton. Burton back in the box for SAU. Runners at second and third with two out. Ichabod scored four in the top of the first. Muir Riders have scored one here in the bottom. It's a two-ball, two-strike count with two out and two on. Deuces wild with Tucker Burton at the plate. And time asked for and granted to Tucker Burton as Stewart took a little too long. They shook off three different signs from his catcher. Burton now will step back in. Stewart looks in for his sign. And now time called again. I bet may have been for the catcher. catcher. Yep. Umpire pointed down to him. Burton will step back in again. Here comes the 2-2. Burton looked at a fastball outside, 3-2. and two. Yeah, the catcher and the pitcher were having a little, uh, having, having some difficulty there trying to decide what to throw. A disagreement. End up trying to get, uh, maybe try to get Burton to chase on an outside fastball. Count full now. Again, Burton steps back into the box. And the 3-2 pitch. Burton looked at it outside for ball four. Off-speed pitch. Didn't miss by much, but that's ball four, and that loads him up for Chris Lyons. Yeah, didn't quite break in back far enough towards the plate, so base is loaded, and here comes the no, hottest no, hitter no, of no, them no, all no, for no, SAU. Chris Lyles could put the Mule Riders on top with one swing of the bat. He's hit five home runs this year. He's driven in 31 runs, batting 361. He is second. I think I said Manning was second. He is actually second leading hitter on the team behind Riley Orr, who bats ninth. Here's the pitch. Outside ball one. All of a sudden, you got uh, Stewart going with a lot of breaking pitches. Started out early, showing mostly fastball. Wiles, right-handed hitter, Muir Rider left fielder. Bases loaded. The pitch on the way. Up and in with a fastball. Lyles had to duck away from that one. You'll take one for the team anywhere but there. Yeah, not, yeah, not in the lid. Just ask Mr. Orr. He knows about those. <laughs> he got one planted on his ear hole at, at Delta State earlier this year. And yeah, they told ended us up missing over a week. The injuries to Orr and then the one with Ty Manning in his finger. I don't ever want to hear those discussed again. Two balls, no strikes to Lyles. Stewart's pitch. And that's fouled straight back. Right at almost part of our air. It did. It right it up and did. above us. 2-0 fastball, and Lyles was ready for it. Just got underneath it. That could kind of make a guy worry when you realize that this glass in front of us is not uh, not unbreakable. <laughs> Have you verified that with somebody? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thanks. Now, yeah, it's, not now safe, it's not safety glass. Here's the 2-1. Lyles looked at a fastball for a strike. Yeah, at the knees. Two balls, two strikes. Two out, bases loaded for SAU in the bottom of the first inning. Boy, big pitch here. I don't know if our nerves can take it. I don't if, either. If, if every half inning is going to be like, no. the, like the top and the bottom of the first inning. The 2-2 delivery to Lyles, and he looked at it outside. Ball three. Good job not to chase there. Good job by the catcher, Bay, to keep it from going to the backstop. He had to stretch out over in the, batter, in the batter's box to his right, which is the unoccupied one. Neil Ryder crowd trying to uh, stir up Mr. Lyles. The count's full. Runners will be off. Bases loaded, two out. The pitch. And a swing and a miss. A high fastball, and Lyles strikes out, and Stewart. Gets out of the inning, giving up just one run. One run 
on three base hits. There were no errors and three men left on base. After one, four to one, Washburn. This is Beer Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country, 99.1. Faith Armstrong. If you worry about your safety or your loved ones, Columbia County Ambulance Service would like you to know about CareLink. CareLink provides an instant link to emergency response every minute, every day. The standard version provides protection surrounding the home, and a mobile unit offers protection anywhere. The area covered includes Columbia, Hempstead, Nevada, Washita, Lafayette Counties, and Claiborne Parish. Call Columbia County Ambulance today to schedule your installation. Since 1906, Farmers Bank and Trust has served customers throughout South Arkansas. This year, we've added nine new communities in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We're committed to serving and investing in our new and legacy communities. In Magnolia, we're not the new bank in town, but you've always made us feel at home. When you need a bank perfect for your season of life, come home to Farmers Bank and Trust. Visit myfarmers.bank to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Sweet Onion Steak Teriyaki is now available at Subway on East Main and Magnolia. Steak, cheese, onions, peppers, and Sweet Onion Teriyaki, and you can customize it as you like. Let me tell you about some other Subway heroes. Baja Steak and Jack, Honey Mustard, Rotisserie Style Chicken, Baja Chicken and Bacon, and Turkey Cali Fresh. Subway still has all your other favorites, too. Use the app like I do and earn rewards at Subway in University Plaza Shopping Center on East Main and Magnolia. Shake off winter with the all-new spring arrangements at Bridges on the Square. Located on the Magnolia Square, Bridges has arrangements like the watercolor Blooms Bouquet and the wonderful Whimsy Bouquet. Centerpieces are also available. Bridges helps with any occasion, anytime. Follow Bridges on the Square on Facebook and Instagram or visit BridgetsOnTheSquare.com. Remember, you bring in the spring with Bridges on the Square, your Magnolia flower shop. Jeremy Dorno back to the mound for Southern Arkansas here in the top of the second inning. The Ichabods will start this inning right where they started the last one. Leadoff hitter Cal Watkins. Dorno from the stretch to the plate. That's pulled down the right field line. That's headed toward the corner. It'll be extra bases for Cal Watkins. And uh, rolled around a little bit, but Allen gets it back in. Throws it on the on the fly right to second base, and it's a leadoff double for Cal Watkins. Yeah, not the way you want to start fat first pitch, and he just laces that one down the right field line. Okay, well, well, I looked at some of the in their uh, tournament. They, they had some games where they scored some runs, even though even though they lost the last two to Central Missouri, they still scored 13 in that first game, five in the second. They beat Central Missouri 15 to 13 earlier in the tournament, so this team able to able to put some runs on the board. The leadoff hitter on Brett Ingram at the plate. The pitch, breaking pitch. That's hit a ton to left, and that is gone. Two run bomb from Brett Ingram, and it's six to one Washburn. Wow! Again, first pitch just jumps on it, hit it over the left field wall. Another no doubter. Wow, this is uh, this is uh, unusual. Jeremy Adorno has had an outstanding season, and uh, Washburn Nickabods are roughing him up a little bit here in the in the early going in this game. Yeah, you're right. Only came into the game allowing I think three home runs all season, and has now given up two so far this evening. Quinn Waterbury to the plate. For Washburn, batting 333, he walked in the first and scored the pitch. He looked at it, strikes as the umpire. Must have been about knee high. He's a pretty good sized lad, too. 6'4, 235. That's left. No balls, one strike. Here comes the pitch from Jeremy Adorno. That caught the outside corner for a strike. 
Well, later we've got our Bod Call Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. We do that every game. Join us later for the Bod Call Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. I like a different Mule Rider athlete. Bod Call Bank, local bank, local people serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Adorno's 0-2 pitch to Waterbury. Up and away for ball one. Some of the pitches that Adorno misses with are missing pretty badly. Yeah, they're not close to the zone. Six to one, Ichabods. Top of the second. Chris Sutton out of sight. Second baseman out in, out in right field. There's a fly ball opposite field. Out to left, Lyles runs up under it, and he makes the catch for out number one here in the second inning. That'll bring Parker Dunn to the plate. And a three-run homer in the first to uh, start the scoring for Washburn. Yeah, the way he hit that first one, you uh, don't want him coming up with anyone on board. 18 home runs on the year. Designated hitter bats from the left side. Adorno's pitch. Swing and a miss. Starting with an off-speed pitch. Strike one. Yeah, good job there because Washburn has been going up there and swinging early at the first pitch, expecting fastball. So good job of changing things up. So 0-1 to Dunn. Zion Bolin on deck. Adorno's pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike two. I think that was a slaughter. So he has done set up. Big fella back in the box. Adorno looks into his catcher, Brett McGee. The pitch comes. And a swing and a miss at an off-speed pitch. He did not throw him a fastball on that at no. bat. And one, two, three, done. Swing, swing, swing. Strike, strike, strike. He strikes out. Here's that may be the best, uh, best way to pitch, Mr. Don. Zion Bolin struck out in the first inning. He comes to the plate now. He's a 327 hitter. Two runs in, two men out. Base is empty. Top of two. Adorno's pitch, high with a fastball. Don't want to make a mistake to these hitters. Dunn and Ingram have both gone deep against Adorno. The 1-0 pitch from Jeremy Adorno on the way. Breaking pitch, foul back, out of play. Look out, kids. Put up the big hospitality tent over there, as you did, for folks to have a place to go sit, sit at some tables, enjoy their food from the concession stand, and get a little shade, and uh, have a little protection from getting hit by a foul ball while you're while you're dining over there. Took away a little bit of the uh, kids' baseball field over there. Yeah, it did. It did that. <laughs> May have been good. They're more a confined area. Yes. Moms and dads can keep a better eye on them. 1-1 one, one pitch, takes a shot at right field, down the line, and it tails foul. And up on top of the uh, of the bullpen area down there for SAU. That had home run distance opposite field, yeah. but it went foul. Adorno's got him down in the count. One ball, two strikes, so let's see if he can. Well, when these guys hit one hard, yes. it goes a long way, doesn't it? They have hit Adorno solidly. The one-two pitch to Bowen is on its way from Adorno. And again, takes a shot at right. And hits that one foul past first base. Yeah, that was a very defensive swing there. Wasn't sure if that was in the vicinity of the outside corner, so just able to fight that one off. Good piece of hitting. Yeah, with two strikes, just trying to poke it through over there. Yep. And there is a lot of room between first and second over there for SAU. Sutton now closes that a little bit. And the 1-2 pitch. 
A foul at the plate. He stays alive. Boy, these are the kinds of at-bats that scare you. Adorno jumps up in the count, and then the hitter, Bowling, just a good job of fighting off a couple of good pitches. Yeah, he came at him with an off-speed pitcher, and he was just able to hold up just enough to make a little contact and foul it off. So count stays one and two on Bowling. Tyler Clark Ciamparelli is due up next. One, two pitch is upstairs for ball two. Off of McGee's mitt, checks his mitt to make sure there weren't any loose uh, loose threads there. He says it's got to be the mitt. That's, that's the right, mitt. that's right. Two balls, two strikes to Bowen. Mr. Adorno on the mound. His 2-2 pitch, and a fouls off another one, comes back off the mask of the catcher, McGee. So it stays 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, He's having a good at bat, yeah. fighting off some good pitches from Adorno. Just getting just enough contact to stay alive. Two balls, two strikes to Bowling. Only on the top of two, and I'm more out already. <laughs> Here's the 2-2 pitch, and he checked his swing and fouled it back to the backstop. Another one. That pitch was up, and he tried to stop his swing. It went out one around enough to make contact. Unfortunately, it went the wrong way. But it is certainly elevating the pitch count of Adorno. Yeah, we don't expect we'll see a complete game from Adorno tonight. Another 2-2 pitch on the way to bowling. Fastball low and away. Ball three. Three and two. Well, this is just a, so far a masterpiece of an at-bat. Adorno's thrown several good, what in most cases would be knockout, strikeout pitches, but... Bowling has stayed alive and worked it full. So a payoff pitch now to Bowling. That's pulled to the left side. Base hit through the hole on the left side. Boy, Bowling, I'm gonna, I wonder how many pitches he fouled off there. It was a sewer. Uh, you can kind of see that one coming the way he was fighting with the at-bat that he was going to get on base some way, somehow, whether by walk or hit. Yeah, they're not keeping up with the, with the pitches or pitch count on the live stats. I'm very curious how many. He fell quite a few off there. To stay alive and finally get the hit. So he's on with two out for Tyler Clark Chaparelli. Norno's pitch. And that's a high strike. With Chappie, and I don't think he thought so, and neither did, neither did their fans. Well, he shook his head no like it was high. Houston Bruce on deck for the Ichabods. Bowling the lead at first, big lead. Pitch comes, low, ball and a strike. Oh, you missed the fly. I want to get that sucker eventually. Probably be right in your line of sight when you squish him against the window. Well, I was there right now. I'm not in the mood to put up with that fly. <laughs> yeah, I can understand. Here comes the 1-1. One -one. That's foul back. Strike two. Another close call. These guys, they get their bat on the ball. They had just... One strikeout so far. Adorno is a strikeout pitcher, and he's only struck out uh, two. Excuse me. He struck out two. Three. Pardon yeah, me. just three. <laughs> All right. It's a little better number, little better number than I thought. <laughs> yeah. I got so much scribbling on there. The pitch comes. It's outside. Uh, uh, missed outside. I think that's two and two now, yes. Yeah, yeah, the first, on further examination. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that whole point just went out the window there. Yeah. There's, With that fly, hopefully. There is no way to save that one. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. 
to Clark Ciaparelli. 2-2 pitch from Adorno is coming. And it's outside. The count again goes full. He said, I wonder how many full counts he's had. Well, we know he's had two back-to-back here. Yeah. Then a bunch. Boy, you do not want to have two two-out walks. You are really asking for disaster in that situation. Last thing you want to have to do is use a lot of bullpen in your first game, but you want to win the thing. Yeah. Here I was right now down 6-1. to one. one on, two out. The pitch, the runner goes. The pitch is high. And uh, no throw down to second base. Yeah, back-to-back two out walks. Oh, I was ball four, excuse me. Yeah, I suspect we'll see some action in the Mule Rider bullpen shortly. So first and second, two out. Yeah, I see some scrambling in the dugout. Well, you, you know, if, of course you can't, you don't have a crystal ball and you don't know. You hope after the first inning that he would, uh, that he could kind of settle down a little bit and, and come out and... Uh, yeah, Sosa's going down, down to get loose. But it hadn't happened here in the second. And the pitch comes, chopper to the right side. Machuca, the first baseman, he'll take it himself at first base. And finally, the Ichabods are retired. They sent nine to the plate in the first inning. They send seven in the second inning. Two runs in the inning for uh, Washburn on three base hits. There were no errors. Two men left on base. We go to the bottom of the second at 6-1 to one Washburn. This is Muir Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country, 99.1. KMC Waldo, Magnolia, Columbia County. You may never need any type of long-term care, but if you did, could you afford it? Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor, Steve Hardy, Laura Kroll, Mark Woods, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Hey friends, this is Lucas Cheatham. This time of year, everyone seems to be catching spring fever. Well, if you need a little more spring in your step, then Health Quest Therapy is here for you. My mom and Christy and her team at Health Quest Therapy provide physical, occupational, and speech therapy. It will have you ready for those spring activities. Visit healthquesttherapy.net or call today at 870-234-2255. Health Quest Therapy, 1515 East Main and Magnolia. Offenhauser and Company Insurance has been an integral part of South Arkansas for over 138 years by providing quality insurance coverage including home, auto, business, health, and specialty insurance from the finest carriers with an in-house claims department and the very best of service. Offenhauser is proud to help sponsor SAU Mule Rider Sports. Offenhauser and Company Insurance. Offices in Texarkana, Atlanta, Mount Pleasant, San Antonio, and Austin, Texas. Your insurance leader since 1882. Connor Allen, Riley Orr, and Chris Sutton do up for SAU here in the bottom half of the second inning. Allen, the eight-hole hitter, the right fielder, and the shortstop, Riley Orr, and then back to the top of the order to the second baseman, Chris Sutton. Allen batting 296. Got nine home runs, 30 driven in. There's a strike. Be nice here if Allen becomes the the fifth mule rider to reach double digits in the home run department. A pitch from Stewart showed bunt, pulled it back, took strike two. Yeah, just that quickly, he's in the yeah. hole. He thought that way he was going to try to lay it down, but he thought it was maybe a little out, maybe even up. Pulled the bat back. Umpire didn't think so. The 0-2 delivery. And Allen took a high fastball. Got a bad feeling in my gut. <laughs> this, this, game, one, yeah, yeah, this game had started well for the Mule Riders. The 1-2 delivery to Allen. Outside 2-2. Two and two. It's kind of an awkward well, follow-through from the pitcher, Stewart, on, on that one. And we've seen these Mule Riders all year. We know that they're capable of coming back from a 6-1 deficit. Yes. Very much so. But it'd be nice to pick up two or three here in this inning. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Allen. 
Had to bring up Riley Orr. Orr batting 379, six home runs, and 50 driven in. Well, that's three strikeouts for Casey Stewart. Yeah, three out of struck four. out three of the last four batters. Just one walk mixed in there to Tucker Burton. So he started a little shaky, but uh, boy, he settled down late in that first inning and looks like it's carried into the second. The pitch to Orr took it high ball one. Yeah, you wonder with the Mule Riders, they sent se seven men up, got three hits in the top of the first, but man, leaving the bases loaded is has a tendency to come back and bite you pretty hard. Orr lines one out into left field. He's the leading hitter on this Mule Rider team, and uh, he adds to that with a single to left. Yeah, that'll turn the lineup over. See if the Mule Riders can make a little more hay with the uh, second time through the lineup. Sutton. Sutton, the Mule Rider second baseman, singled and scored. So far, the only Mule Rider run in this game. He led off the last inning. 6-1, Washburn. Or with the lead at first, here's the pitch. Way outside. Good job by Bay to keep that one from going to the backstop. Yeah, he literally smothered that one with his glove. I'm not sure how he, he managed to keep that one in front. It was a uh, fastball. Stewart's about a little over two to one strikeouts versus walks. Throw to first, and they just about picked off so the, Riley Orr. The first baseman missed the tag. He actually hit the dirt first, and then Riley, if he, uh, if he got he a swipe another, tag yeah. and got his shoulder, I think he was probably out. Orr again gets his lead. I'd say it's a pretty, pretty good move to first base from the pitcher. Big lead for Orr. Pitch is in the dirt. So one and oh to Sutton. Should be two and oh. Yeah, it should be. The other one, yeah. Yeah, the other one was in the dirt too. Yeah. Yeah, two and oh is the count. They're not paying attention. Hey Bowen, tell them two and oh is the count. They got it. Chris Sutton at the plate. Two balls, no strikes. Boy, another, 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 yeah, he almost almost didn't get back again. Riley might want to cut down that lead yeah. just a little bit over there. <laughs> kind of what I'm thinking. That's uh, He doesn't he, have Bowen Phillips speed. That's right. It was a little too close for comfort there. Two balls, no strikes to count to Sutton. Here's the pitch, a fastball. That must have been low. Yeah, it was low. I think that had more to do with the way the catcher called it. He... Actually dropped to his knees, and I think he could have framed that one and gotten a strike call. I thought it was from I up saw, here, but I, I agree with you. I couldn't really tell because it was in front of his body, so I couldn't get a good look at it. Yeah, I think the catcher was maybe expecting it to break a little more than it did. Well, that's a 3-0 count now to Sutton. The pitch comes, and that's a fastball in for a strike. Sutton was expecting away, and he had to kind of lean back away from that one, a fastball. I think Sutton was going to take all the way there at 3-0. Oh. It's 3-1 and one now. Riley, a walking lead over there at first. Stretches it out again pretty good. Throw it over there, and he is back in. Another head first slide. Well, he's going to have a dirty uniform, he's if nothing getting, else. Getting a workout. May have some sore ribs. Couple of pounds of dirt in his britches. Again, a big lead over at first. Another throw over there. And again, dives back into the ball, popped out of the mitt that time, but Orr was back in there. And now first baseman is going to go talk to his pitcher. I think he's going to say, uh, quit throwing it over yeah, here. Stop it. <laughs> stop it. You're going to throw one into right field. <laughs> Riley Orr would agree. <laughs> uh. Riley's having a brush <laughs> off over there a little bit. Knock off some of that added weight. Did you get him? I smeared something. Oh, oh you got him. He flew away, but I don't think he's going to live long. There's some remnants. The pitch to Sutton, a high strike is called. i got to wipe. 
I got, not, <laughs> got, not got fly blood on my on my stat sheet. That gummit. <laughs> Didn't think that one out, did you? <laughs> I don't know. I was, I was so frustrated with that fly, I had to get rid of it. <laughs> that Henderson radio crew let that fly in. There's one, a check swing foul back over the backstop and out of play. I'm going to throw that on the ground. Yes. It's got fly blood on it. And excuse <laughs> me, swing there. Ball was probably going to be high, but good job just getting the piece. Full count, three and two on Sutton. Red McGee's on deck. All right, Mule Riders need to put up a crooked number here in the second inning. I'm sure Mr. Stewart would agree. <laughs> Probably not. The runner goes, the pitch comes. High fly ball out to right field, bowling over toward the line. He makes the catch, and the runner or has to retreat to first base. Had a good idea there. Went opposite field. But just too much air it under it, and the right fielder pulling able to run it down. Brett, Brett McGee with two outs to see if the Mule Riders can cut into this lead. McGee singled and was stranded in the first. Yeah, McGee also launched one out of the stadium. Unfortunately, it was a little, little to the right of the right field foul pole. This guy doesn't look like the same guy that gave up those long. Shots fouled to Sutton and McGee early in the in the game. He's he's been pitching pretty tough of late. Trying to jinx him. And the fastball outside, ball one to Brett McGee. Wind blowing straight out towards center field now. Well, he has retired four of the last six he's faced. He's given up a walk and a single, mixed in with three strikeouts and a fly ball out. McGee ready. Here's the pitch. McGee took it high. It's two balls, no strikes. Brandon Nichols on deck for the Mule Riders. McGee steps back in the box. Loser of this game plays at two tomorrow. Winner plays at six. 2-0 pitch. That's in there for a strike. McGee took it. Loser of this game will play Northeastern State at 2 o'clock here. Winner plays Henderson State. In the winner's bracket finals. Both teams, they and whoever wins this game, will be without a loss. 2-1 pitch outside, 3-1. It's just 14 sub-regional so take a lot of games to get through but it's double elimination so like say we'll have two games today two tomorrow two saturday for sure and possibly and there's that if game if necessary on sunday three one pitch mcgee is swinging a miss for strike two yeah it took a little bit off that pitch and mcgee out in front out a little away from me. He had to kind of step yeah. into it. As he swung, he came across the plate. Eventually, he kind of fell across with the swing. So it's a full count, three and two. Stewart comes with a three, two runners off. Pitch low and outside, ball four. So first and second with two out for Brandon Nickel. Brett McGee on the season has walked now. How many times that? Four, that's 50 now. That's his 50th walk of the season. More than one a game. And, and he's been hit by the pitch 24 times. So, yeah. So, 70, so we're coming up on 75 if he earns another walk or a hit by pitch. So it'll be 75 free passes on the season. First and second. Two men out for SAU in the bottom of the second inning. Brandon Nickel at the plate. Stewart wants the catcher to go through the signs again. Now he's ready. Now he steps off. I'm not sure if they pick if the who, who called time there, but anyway, the pitch comes now. 
Breaking pitch gets away from the catcher. Runner from second is going to advance to third. Runner at first, McGee will stay put. Yeah, Raleigh Orr heads up base running as soon as the ball got loose. He went ahead and broke towards third. No, not even a throw attempted there. I think that's a pass ball myself. I do too. I think, I think the pitcher and catcher got crossed up on the sign. Yeah, I do go with the pass ball. I was that's what I would have, would have gone with. So first and third with two out, one ball, no strike count to Brandon Nickel. The pitch comes fastball, lined in the left field. That's a base hit, and it drives drives in Riley Orr from third base. So that pass ball comes back to hurt him. Now the throw back in gets away but nobody will advance. So Nickel with an RBI single, he's driven in both meal rider runs. Yeah, he laced that one over the shortstop's head. Line drive, and yeah, you're right, that pass ball, Riley Orr may still have scored, but it would have been a tough task as hard as that one was hit. So six to two now, Washburn leading, Jacob Machuca to the plate for SAU. Catcher Bay out to visit with his pitcher, Stewart. Yeah, that ball was hit pretty hard by Mr. Nickel. It got out to your right. It got out to left field in a hurry. So, well, as Machuca comes to the plate, speaking of hitting it hard, he is not going to get cheated in his swing. So, see if he gets a first pitch fastball here and decides to tee off. Two men are out here in the bottom of the second inning. Runners with their leads. Here's the pitch, and that's the ball. He took a big swing and fouled yeah. it back to the backstop. Bounces off the screen and out onto the playing field. The the netting behind behind the backstop here behind home plate is uh, very tightly strung. It's like a trampoline. It'll it'll bounce right back out there. Zero and one. Stewart has. The sign now stretches, looks back to second. Takes another peek now to the plate. And that's pulled foul. Ooh, just past the near right of dugout. Good thing that didn't come in. Uh, it was a tomahawk down the line, but now but you down 0-2. Has to kind of go with a different mindset at the plate here. Jacob Machuca back into the box for the Mule Riders. Ty Manning's on deck. Bottom of the second inning. A 6-2 game. The pitch comes. And it's foul back. Well, I'm really surprised he challenged him with the fastball in. No balls, two strikes. I think Machuca was probably a little surprised himself. Kind of came up and in up, up, up close to his hands. You know, the way he turned on that last foul ball, I would have stayed away from that area. Chuka steps back in. He started to step in on the catcher or the umpire called time. Now he's back in. It's a no ball, two strike count to Jacob Machuka. Mere rider first baseman. The pitch comes and he pulls a breaking pitch. Or actually, he fouled it off to the left side, didn't he? He did. He got around late on that one. He, he Like he started his swing and he kind of held a little bit and then fouled it off to the left side. No, good job. That was going to be flirting with the outside corner. So good job fighting that pitch off. The 0-2 count on Machuca. Stewart's ready. Here comes his pitch. Machuca looked at strike three. Looked low and away. Machuca didn't like the call. Now looks back at the umpire. Don't say anything, please. Strike three called on Jacob Machuca. He is rung up by the home plate umpire. And home plate umpire is catching some grief from the Muir Rider dugout. So that retires the Muir Riders here in the second inning. They score one run on two base hits, no errors, two men left on. We've played two at 6-2 to two Washburn. This is Muir Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Stay healthy and
2022 with Doctors Chambliss and Davis. They see patients of all ages from newborn to elderly. They also do primary care, weight loss management, DOT physicals, cool sculpting, BioT hormone physicals, and more. They're open Monday through Thursdays from 8 till 4 and Fridays 8 till noon. The office of Chambliss and Davis is now accepting new patient applications with most insurances accepted, including United Healthcare. Follow Doctors Chambliss and Davis on Facebook for details. Doctors Chambliss and Davis, 1701 East North Street in Magnolia. Become one of the many satisfied patients who use Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Refilling your prescriptions is easy with Prince Pharmacy's new mobile app. You can also refill or transfer prescriptions on their new website, PrincePharmacyRx.com. Prince Pharmacy still has their 24-hour refill line, too. Call 234-7292 anytime. Prince Pharmacy also has a convenient drive through and free delivery in the Magnolia City limits. See how they make a difference at Prince Pharmacy in the Southern Medical Group Clinic at 211 East Stadium in Magnolia. We can sum up McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. Crispy, but also juicy and tender. Okay, it's crispy, juicy, tender. All one word, but then also pickle. Oh, and potato bun, which is two words. Okay, we can sum up our new crispy chicken sandwich in one word. So, you'll just have to try it to understand it. Order ahead on the McDonald's app at participating McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Field here on the campus of Southern Arkansas University for Central Regional. Your riders trailing by a score of six to two to Washburn University. Top of the third inning, it's the eight, nine, and one hitters do up for the Ichabods. Cross Bay, Connor Scott, then back to the top of the order with Cal Watkins, Jeremy Adorno, back to work for the Mule Riders. Bay with an RBI single back in the big first inning. First pitch dribbled out towards third and off the glove of Brandon Nickel. Raleigh Orr there to back him up. That one just went off the heel of Allen's glove. Should have been an easy play. That's going to be E5 to start the top of the third inning. That kind of went up and over, didn't it? Didn't it catch yeah. off the... And it got the... Yeah, it but anyway, it, yeah, it, just, it took a... And, and, and it looked like that he had his glove there. He was going to make the play, and it just kind of... On through. Yeah, and he immediately pointed to his pitcher Adorno and put his hand on his chest saying that was that was my fault. Nonetheless, leadoff man is aboard for Washburn. Connor Scott to the plate. Adorno takes a look in, batter squares to bunt, bunts it back to the backstop foul for strike one. Connor Scott struck out to end the first inning. Washburn struck for four runs in the first, two runs in the second. Mule Riders with one run each in the first and the second innings. Gets us to the current 6-2 to two score. Dorno again a look over at first base towards the runner. He comes set. Comes home. Batter squares to Bunn and again bunted back to the backstop and He's down no balls, two strikes, and more, more than likely will take the bunts off of the table here. Kind of interesting the way this game is gone that Washburn would be squaring the bunt. Well, he's the number nine hitter, batting 277. Yeah, it's not, not terrible numbers, though. He's got six home yeah. runs, got some pop. Hey. He's down no balls, two strikes. The 0-2 pitch from Adorno, that went up and in for ball one. I don't necessarily think he was bunting for a sacrifice. I think he was trying to lay down a bunt for a base hit over toward first with the first baseman holding. Maybe, maybe. I don't Not Not sure. Third baseman playing back, too. Pachuca holding the runner on at first. Nickel, the third baseman, is even with the bag. Now he's going to take a couple of steps back. Adorno's pitch curveball, that one drilled, but well foul. As Connor Scott stays alive, Adorno ran that one in, and Connor Scott able to get his hands in and drive it foul. So we'll try the one-two again. 
your riders defensively pretty much straight away. Short lead at first by Cross Bay. The pitch swing to miss, and there is out number one as Connor Scott goes down swinging. That is strikeout victim number four on the evening for Jeremy Adorno. A nice looking curveball there yeah. from Jeremy Adorno. Back to the leadoff spot, Cal Watkins, one for two, doubled back in the second inning and came around to score. Left-hander stands in. Adorno comes home. That one way outside as catcher Brett McGee scoots over to glove it. May has to stay put at first base. Watkins, one of the few guys you see now that chooses to go without batting gloves on either hand. Adorno's 1-0 pitch. Fastball still a little bit outside. 2-0 is the count. Yeah, there's still a few of them around, but they're, you're, you're right, there are not a whole lot. Not many. I still keep saying I'm going to go down and see Machuca's gloves because he's, he's, he's got, got some neon, you know, the work like, gloves. Yeah, yeah, look like work gloves. The 2-0 pitch. Again, outside, and it's three balls, no strikes. All three pitches to Cal Watkins have been well wide of the plate to the left-handed hitting shortstop. Watkins throws right-handed. It's left-handed. The 3-0 from Jeremy Adorno. Fastball, I'm not sure where that missed, but four-pitch walk. It's now two men aboard. Cross Bay over to second base. Cal Watkins trots over to first. Brent Ingram who has already had himself a pretty good afternoon. Ingram two for two, has scored two runs and then had the two run home run back in the second inning. One of two home runs hit by Washburn so far. Is your live stats down by the way? Because mine is. Pitch swinging a miss, handcuffed Ingram on that one. I think a lot of it's got to do with the Wi-Fi is not, not very good. I guess yours is working. Yeah, this appears, oh. appears to be. Oh, well. Got the score right anyway. No balls, one strike, two men on. One out, top of the third inning. Dorno, that one lifted out towards right. Connor Allen underneath it. He's going to glove it. The runner fakes the tag at second, doesn't go, and it's a good thing because <laughs> mighty like Connor Allen <laughs> threw an absolute laser beam into Riley Orr, and Mr. Bay would have had 0.00% chance of advancing. They're now two out in the top of the third. The number three hitter, Quinn Waterbury. Yeah, it comes to the plate. I believe Connor Allen's reputation proceeds wow. there in right field. That, that was, was that was a laser. <laughs> that was, he threw a line shot. I don't think that thing got more than six feet off the ground. Maybe maybe seven. Yeah. And on a line drive into the shortstop who cut it, and the runner didn't go. Waterbury left-handed hitting first baseman. First pitch swing and a miss for strike one. Who do you think? has the most wins of any pitcher ever at SAU in a single season. I know one of them. We're watching him right now. Yep. Who's the other? Larry Lundin. Who was supposed to be. Yeah, he was supposed to be here. He yeah. did it back in 1987. That was a, well, that was a heck of a team. Adorno, a look towards second, comes home, took a little off that one, and again gets Quinn Waterbury swinging out in front. 0-2 is the count. Yeah, I hate that Larry was not able to uh, to make it down. He intended to to be here and then uh, was not able to make it. He was, of course, we were all expecting that the way Adorno's pitched, that it's an automatic, that, yeah, right? that he would that he'd pick up the 15th win. But that is in jeopardy as the Mule Riders trail 6-2. But anyway, Larry, I know, is listening in, watching in. 
How you doing, Larry? Good to see you. O2 lifted, hit pretty well out towards right field. Connor Allen goes back. That one is off the board for a home run. That goes above the fence off of the advertising signs out in right center field, and that is home run number three. That one is a three-run shot, and this lead has been extended to nine to two. Wow. Yeah, we didn't expect to see this. Well, and part of that is, again, leadoff man Bay comes around to score after reaching on an error. Then the walk to Cal Watkins, and boy, both of those come back to haunt the Buell Riders. Again, third time that Washburn has played long ball. Yeah, rather than rather than a solo shot there, yeah, you got the error and the walk. Otherwise, shouldn't have even got an at bat there right. with, you know, with the error. Out of the inning. Instead, Parker Dunn comes to the plate. He hit a home run in the first. Fastball outside for ball one. Santos Sosa was out throwing for SAU. There still appears to be action out in the Mule Rider bullpen. Yes, these guys are like they're taking batting yeah, they so are they're there. Man, they're stroking nine, it. Nine runs off nine hits. For Washburn. Dornos pitch, good one. Curveball called strike. Two runs, five hits, one error for the Mule Riders. Again, we talked about it. The Mule Riders are they're hitting the ball and you feel like they're gonna put runs on the board, but and you gotta quit giving up crooked numbers if you want to get back in this game. The one-one pitch to Parker Dunn. Fastball swing and a miss. Count goes to one ball, two strikes. If they don't stop scoring, you're never going to catch them. That would be correct. It's going to be difficult anyway. Now their pitcher has not pitched a complete game this year, but uh, you don't want to get get behind any further. One-two fastball outside. I think I said that last inning and the inning before, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like he had three runs off one hit is the big one. Like you said, the the walk in the air. Solo shots don't hurt you nearly as much as the two, three, and four run home runs. The two, two. That one grounded towards second. Sutton playing in shallow right. Scoops it, throws over to Machuca, who's able to hold on to the bag and record the out to retire the side, but not before the Ichabods well, strike for three runs off of one hit. There, there was one base. error, no one left on base as we head to the bottom of the third. It's Washburn 9 and the Mule Riders 2. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. The Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place are located in the heart of Magnolia, Arkansas. Wentworth offers award-winning services. Their cottages are homes large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 elders with private rooms and complete baths surrounding a shared living room, open kitchen, dining area, and spa. They recognize the importance of performing our jobs with compassion and providing comfort physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Celebrate National Nurse Home Week with the Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place. Visit cottagesofwentworthplace.com. The weather in a crowded gym, in the bleachers at the ball field, or sitting under the Friday night lights, South Arkansas is all about tradition. Since 1903, our tradition at Botcall Bank has been to create lasting relationships with our customers and community partners. Local traditions, local leadership, and local decisions. At Botcall Bank, we are your local team, and we are committed to you and our community. Botcall Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is there one place I can go for all my car, truck, and SUV needs? One place for all kinds of repairs, tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, oil changes, tires, etc., etc.? Well, yes, there is. Spitler Tire and Auto. You've been trusting Spitler Tire and Auto for 15, 16 years now, and they're still working hard for you. Call to set up an appointment to get your ride into one of their 10 service bays, and it'll be back to peak performance in no time. Spitler Tire and Auto in the Dairy Queen Shopping Center, 521 East Main and Magnolia. Bottom of the third inning, Ty Manning, Tucker Burton, and Chris Lyles do up. There's an attempted bunt that is almost bunted over the press box by, Ty, by Tucker Burton, rather. 
or Tom Manning, I'm sorry. Did not get, do a good job of laying that one down. No, that was uh, up and over the back. That was almost into the parking lot. <laughs> good idea. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, third baseman was back, but uh, your riders back to yeah, was put it back up over the backstop. Offensively, have done okay, except leaving a few men on base. Two runs, five hits, one error. The problem is Washburn has scored at nine runs and nine hits. Your riders trailing by seven. The pitch swinging a miss, and Tom Manning is quickly down. No balls, two strikes, as that one was thrown low and away. Manning offered and had absolutely no shot at making contact there. Mule Riders in desperate need of a few runs here in the bottom of the third inning. Casey Stewart, the starter for Washburn. That's an off-speed pitch. Did not get Manning to chase. Count goes to one and two. Wind still blowing out towards center. Ichabod's playing straight away. One, two, well up in the zone. Evis count two and two. The center fielder, Connor Scott, playing a relatively shallow center field. Stewards, 2 2 pitch from the wind up. Fastball, that one popped up and back. It's going to get out of play. I don't think, it sounded like it hit, hit aluminum, so I don't think it. Uh, drilled any of the mule rider yeah. faithful below us hopefully the ricochet didn't catch anybody yeah. a lot of oohs and ahs and a few shrieks so i didn't hear any painful type shrieks we'll try the 2-2 pitch again let's see if the mule riders can get the lead off man on fastball outside count goes full count started out 0-2 is now 3-2 Casey Stewart has not pitched more than six innings in any game this year. So you got to think eventually the Muir Riders can get to this guy. They just they got to find a way to stop them. Full count pitch, low. Well, okay. Manning swung. I thought the catcher was unable to glove it. And they say, I guess he got the tag on Manning. He does not throw down to first. Must Nonetheless, there's, him at the plate. yeah, well, I thought he missed him, but one out. As Tom Manning strikes out for the second time this evening. Tucker Burton, the Mule Rider designated hitter, comes to the plate. He walked in the first inning. Left-handed hitting Burton versus the right-handed throwing Casey Stewart. Stewart's pitch. That one is gone. That may be to the softball complex. It is up and onto the bridge out in right field. That was a bomb, no doubter. First pitch fastball inside. And Tucker Burton did vicious things to that baseball. Mule Riders. Solo home run by Tucker Burton. Make this a 9-3 ball game. And what a shame that nobody was on base My there. Great. Wow. I mean, he just crushed that one. Good wow. Grief. Did you see it bounce off the bridge over yeah. there? That was a, there's people a, that aren't familiar with the ballpark. <laughs> Beyond right field, there's a parking lot and the weight, weight room there and a parking lot, a big parking lot. And then there's a, a, bridge. a, a ditch on the other yeah. side and there's a big long bridge constructed. It bounced off the bridge. So who knows how far that ball went. That was the definition of a no-doubter. Lyles to the plate, curveball, a little bit low. Four, I, I think it's farther than Matt. Pum, Pumphrey you, says 427. Right? I'm going to take the okay. over. Put, put me down for the over. <laughs> he says 427. That, that, yeah, that's yeah. a long way. That one fouled back. Evis count one ball, one strike. Wow. Yeah. I think everybody was ooing and aahing over that one. Well, one thing about it, we knew it was a home run. As yeah, that was the, yeah. Hit it. it wasn't. That's got a chance. It could. No, it, it's gone. One and one the count to Chris Lyles. A little back-to-back -back action right here. Off-speed pitch, and he had Lyles fooled. Lyles way out in front, tried to slow his bat down, but unable to make contact. And Well, even though it's only a solo, too, it, it gives the fans... It, it a, little a little life now. Little you, you can hear the, yeah. the, the the life has returned to the SAU fans. Yeah, needed needed a little something there, and that was a lot of something. A one-two in the dirt. 
count pulls even at two and two. Yeah, that was. And it puts, maybe puts a little fear in Stewart out there. It, it, I guarantee you I, it I does when, that Burton, again. when Burton comes to the plate at will. Like, we're going to go ahead and take the fastball inside off of the uh, off the list of pitch calls there. 2-2, two, two, outside. Good job by Chris Lyles to stay back. Count goes full. Come on, Chris. Catcher, catcher. Catcher. Yeah, catcher wanted to know where that was. It was outside and low. That's what I thought. <laughs> but it was outside and low to Machuca on the other side of the plate That's earlier, true. and it was strike three. So uh, you never know. The full count pitch. Fastball, that one lifted out towards center. Hit pretty well. Let's see if the wind may carry that one. It's going, going, gone. Straight away center field, and Lyles does it back-to-back. Back. Tucker Burton, Chris Lyles, back-to-back back solo shots. The Mule Riders say, not so fast, my friend, as this is now a 9-4 game. And the Mule Rider bats appear to be alive, and there is definitely life with the blue and gold now. Not only are the Mule Riders back, but they are back-to-back. Back. <laughs> well played. Yeah, Catherine, Catherine's giving us her Queen Queen, Queen Elizabeth wave down there. <laughs> she, she told us that was two, just in case we missed it. Two back-to-back, and that is going to bring a mound visit from Washburn. Well, later on, we'll bring you our Magnolia Regional Medical Center mid-game summary. You always feel tired and exhausted even after a night of sleep. You may suffer from a variety of common sleep disorders. The Magnolia Regional Medical Center Sleep Lab can diagnose disorders and get you on your way to a full night's rest. Ask your health care provider about a sleep study at Magnolia Regional Medical Center. Connor Allen says, what about back to back to back? Uh, he is certainly capable of doing that. Yeah, he's got nine home runs on the season. Could be the fifth mule rider to go into double digits in that category. I would say no time like the present as there is action quickly stirring in the Washburn bullpen. Pitch off speed pitch. Able to find the top half of the strike zone. We kind of felt like with the wind blowing out that we'd have some home runs hit here tonight. You think that one from, from uh, Lyles would have got out without the wind? I don't know. It would have been off the wall. It was that, a very high, he hit high it, ball. He there. hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark, right over the 395 sign. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't think it would have made it out without the wind. Yeah. It would have been a double. It would have been extra bases. No balls, two strikes. There was no chance the center fielder was getting there as shallow as he was playing. The 0-2 pitch inside almost hit Allen, and that was more of a defensive swing. As the pitcher, for some reason, decided to stare down Allen on his way back to the dugout. They started to swing, and that, that came up under his chin. Then he had to kind of, while he was swinging, hold his head back, hope that he wouldn't get hit in the face. Riley or the Mule Rider shortstop comes to the plate. He is one for one. Had a sharply hit single back in the second inning. Came around to score. Uh, pitch curveball, that one hit well out towards left center. That one is going, going up the wall. And are they going to call that a home run? They're calling it a home run. The umpire out in center field is calling it a home run. It's gone. That goes off the advertiser's sign. The Mule Riders, three home runs here in the bottom of the third inning as Riley Orr goes ahead and pumps one over the left center field wall. And the Mule Riders now have cut this ball game to a four-run deficit as they're clawing back in. Three runs in the bottom half of the third off three solo shots. Off the starting pitcher, Casey Stewart. And it's really good to have that extra umpire, that four-man crew out there, because he could see from the side there that ball hit off of that sign out there because it's a white sign with some, with some lettering on it. The pitch to Chris Sutton. That one fouled off the catcher's helmet for strike one. I gonna say, I couldn't believe that ball didn't get out. I, I couldn't either, but they were playing it like it hit the top of the wall. And then you're right, that, uh, that umpire out behind second base was signaling immediately that it was out of here. 0-1 to Sutton. That one fouled back. He is quickly in the hole. No, no balls, two strikes. For the Mule Rider leadoff man, he is one for two. Yeah, this is uh, 
people say the ball is flying out of the park. That is the, what, sixth home run already. Now tied at three apiece. In that department, 0-2 pitch, that one lifted foul. Really, the difference in the game is Washburn has had men aboard with their home runs, and all three of the Mule Riders' home runs have been solo shots. But again, now a 9-5 ball game. The 0-2 to Sutton outside and low for ball one. Reminds me of that last regular season series of the season last year at Northwestern Oklahoma State. That whole weekend was like that, though. Balls were away. flying out of the yeah. ballpark. Pitch the out one fouled back. Good job by Chris Sutton staying alive. Yeah, and I would say the uh, intensity of the Washburn bullpen has picked up significantly. They got double barrel action. Lefty and a righty throwing out. One, two in the dirt. Two and two the count. I've got a, I've got a piece of the catcher, too. That hurt. Kind of surprised Stewart's working quickly. Now he's going to step off, take a breath. And try the 2-2 pitch. There it is. That one fouled back. Sutton has spoiled off a few good pitches from Casey Stewart. A three-game series at Northwestern last year. SAU hit 15 home runs in those three games. And I don't know how I many Northwestern. They hit almost as many, almost as many, or maybe more. Pitch, uh, all-speed pitch. Outside is the pitcher steward talks to the SAU dugout and points at him despite the fact he just gave up three home runs in one inning. Three First runs, three, all, home runs. <laughs> three hits. There were no errors, none left on base. And to the top of the fourth inning, it's the Ichabods at nine and the Mule Riders five. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Big day of closet organizing, toddler yoga, scavenger hunts, jigsaw puzzling, and sledding down the stairs. Get Pizza Hut's big dinner box. Two medium, one topping pizzas, five breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. The big dinner box, from our hut to yours. Ask for contactless and curbside. Availability of contactless curbside delivery areas, charges, and minimums vary. Delivery charge non tip. This week's at your service featured item, cotton and rayon mop heads. These mop heads are high quality and have an ultra absorbent design. Mops have clamp or screw ends. Handles sold separately. Come by and see the at your service team today. At your service environmental solutions where they know the power of clean. 1506 North Vine in Magnolia or visit at your service stores.com. I believe it's my job to keep you safe and secure. I like to thank the Farm Bureau agents like me serve a higher calling, protecting you and your loved ones and everything families in Columbia County care about. It's what motivates me every day. I'm Jeff Hansen. Call me at 870-234-1966 for a quick auto home or life insurance quote and to learn more about how Farm Bureau insurance can save you time and money. That's Jeff Hansen at 870-234-1966. Mule Riders going to the bullpen here at the top of the fourth inning. In relief of Jeremy Adorno, it will be Hayden Habel, six foot two, 195 pound freshman out of Benton, Louisiana, out of Benton High School. On the season, Habel with a 3.86 ERA. This will be his sixth appearance. He's pitched seven innings, given up 10 hits, three earned runs, three walks. Has struck out five, and opponents hitting 313 against Hayden Habel. Last outing was on April 26th at uh, Texas A&M. Texas County pitched an inning there, which was uh, he walked one, but he's also struck out one of that inning. Just pitched the one inning, didn't give up anything. Uh, 
He pitched three and two thirds at Oklahoma Baptist back on April the 15th. Gave up six hits, four runs, but only two of those were earned. He's, he's, uh, he's had his moments for Mule Riders this year, and hopefully this will be one of them. Let's hope the Mule Riders kind of claw back into this game. We're still trailing by scoring 9-5. Of course, the pitcher for Washburn, Casey Stewart, inexplicably decided to give some more. First, the pitch. There's fastball inside. Maybe a little more encouragement towards the SAU bench. I'm not sure exactly why he was pointing and yelling at the Mule Rider dugout after giving up three home runs, but... To each their own. It was the three strikeouts that he was emphasizing. <laughs> Must, uh, he was emphasizing something. The next pitch up in the zone. Two balls, no strikes is the count to Zion Bolin, the right fielder. Officially 0 for 1. He did walk back in the second inning. The rider pitcher Habel takes a look at his wristband after getting the signal from the SAU bench. Continues to be some activity in the Mule Rider bullpen. Hey, Bulls pitch, and excuse me, swing that is fouled off. Well, I think I'm, I'm thinking the the coaching staff for SAU they know now that their their bats are going to come to life. They're going to score some runs, and uh, just Jeremy and normally, God bless him, and just this wasn't his night. And, and uh, they're just hoping that maybe maybe a, a crew of Mule Rider pitchers can keep him at bay. Next pitch fouled back. It's now a two-ball, two-strike count. That's the thing. If you can if you can keep him at bay, then I think the Mule Riders probably after that power output there with the three home runs, got to feel like they're going to score some runs here tonight. Abel steps back to the mound. The left-handed pitcher looks in at his catcher, Brett McGee. It's the sign, comes home, another foul ball out of play. Count remains at two and two. Yeah, I would think there's a pretty good chance we've seen the last of Casey Stewart. Given the action that was down in the bullpen. Of course, no one at the moment up and throwing for Washburn. Prior to that, he'd been pretty tough. 2-2 two -two pitch again, fouled back and out of play. You know, like I said, he was pretty tough on three batters in that inning. He struck out three, but gave up three long balls, too. So, who knows? Crazy game. Well, things could, could get crazier. This game already getting close to the two-hour mark, and we're in the top of the fourth inning. 2-2, two -two, that was curveball that didn't curve. It stayed high up in the zone. Count goes full. No Sosa was up throwing earlier. I don't know if there's how many arms are up in the Mule Rider bullpen. I only see one. People's full count pitch. That one popped up towards center field. Ty Manning coming in. Looks like he's got a read on it. He does. He makes the catch for out number one. I can't it's a right-hander throw, and I think it's Sosa. I, I, I can't get a good look at the number. They're in, it's indoors there. No, no, There's no, just no, a no, little no, small no, slit no, in the screen no, there. No, really. And I'm trying to look through, and I can't really tell, but I can tell it's a right-hander. Well, when Adorno first ran into trouble, Sosa was the first man yeah, he, headed that direction yeah. for the Mule Riders. So. And again, you're right. You kind of, you know, you got a tournament here. You're still down four runs. How, how do you manage your bullpen here? Pitch, swing, and a miss. Good job there taking something off of it is Clark. Did we decide Chaparelli? Yeah. I, I, he, he had to have gotten a piece of that. It ended up, ended up going down at the feet of McGee. I don't think better. he did. I think he got fooled with the pitch. It was he a might, breaking might ball have, that was short. Have. Either way, 0-1 the count. That one fouled back to the screen, and now down, no balls, two strikes. Wyatt Mar was going to run out there and retrieve it, but it bounced off of that screen and right back to McGee. Chaparelli, no official at bat yet. He's got a pair of walks and has scored a run. The 0 2. Way high as that goes off the mid of Brett McGee. One ball, two strikes to count. Looks like Brett and. Uh, Brett and Aiden are kind of getting crossed up a little bit here. 
I think yeah. that was another pitch that he wasn't really necessarily what he was expecting. Yeah, Hayden taking a long look at his wristband with the pitch signals. One, two, that one fouled out of play. <laughs> I think he told him, you need to look a little closer at that wristband yeah, out yeah. there. <laughs> you can see Brad just said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put the number down. Well, I, I'm wondering if they have the option of changing. Because even after that, he, you know, he yeah. goes into the normal normal set, I looks suspect. into his catcher. You know, McGee's been here a while. I suspect he's got some control over that. If he sees the opportunity, that one high in the zone. At least that's uh, that's what I would expect. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've never asked. You, know, you kind of trust your upperclassmen. And like I said, he's been doing this for, what is this, year four technically for him? The 2-2. Foul tip into the middle, Brett McGee, as Chaparelli goes down swinging for out number two. Yeah, as far as number of years, I can't keep up with all that. With the COVID years that get added in and all that, he's listed as a junior. He's been, yeah, he's been here. Probably. And he played his probably freshman. his fourth year yeah. here, yeah. And he played immediately. He was instantly a very good player for the Mule Riders. Yeah, he and Muldoon were that, yeah, they kind of back swapped and forth in there and a little bit. He and Zach Muldoon. Pitch that one fouled back and out of play. Easton Bruce to the plate, the left fielder. Zach's got his young brother Ben on the team. Does. Well, I think he's being redshirted. I have not seen him play, which he makes me. I, I don't know if he can or not now. It looks like that on the stats, he's down for one game. Oh, he was in. The old one is fouled into the dirt, and Easton Bruce is down in the count. No balls, two strikes. I don't know how all that works. Yeah, that's with the, with COVID and NIL and all that, I have no idea how college athletics operates at this point in time. But neither does Nick Saban, evidently, if you saw his interview. It was pretty entertaining, unless you're a Texas A&M fan. The O2 took something off that one, and that is hit towards the first baseman. But you could gloves it, throws to his pitcher. Hayden Hable, a good job covering as he gloves it. And three up, three down goes Washburn in the top half of the fourth. As the Mule Runners get ready to go to the plate. The Mule Runners trailing Washburn by a score of 9-5. to five. And You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. You may have several financial goals, but can you reach them all? Rank them by their importance and talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor. Laura Kroll, Mark Woods, Steve Hardy, or Ethan Young. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Southern Medical Group has expanded its family and is pleased to announce that Dr. Chase Helm has joined their practice. Dr. Helm recently graduated from UAMS and specialized in family practice. Dr. Helm will be seeing patients in all age groups. Southern Medical Group will be accepting new patients. Please call 870-234-5995 to make your appointment. Southern Medical Group, our family taking care of yours. Visit smgarkansas.com. Let's be honest, you deserve the best. Jimmy John's and Magnolia makes freaky fast, freaky fresh sandwiches near you using only the freshest ingredients. Stop by and order delivery or pick up from the Magnolia location next to Walmart for a tasty sandwich today. And while you're at it, why don't you choose some chips or a cookie and a drink and make it a combo. Whether you're in store or in a delivery zone, we'll always make you a tasty sandwich. Become a reward member by downloading the Jimmy John's app. Jimmy John's Magnolia, open every day from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. It's convenient to connect with your investment accounts online, but watch out for identity thieves. The Securities and Exchange Commission recommends several steps to protect your sensitive information. First, use strong passwords or passphrases. Avoid widely used phrases. Take advantage of two-step authentication if available. Avoid public computers to access your accounts. And don't click on links that claim to connect to your accounts. It could be a scammer. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor. Laura Kroll, Steve Hardy, Ethan Young, or Mark Woods. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Washburn goes to the bullpen. Casey Stewart is now out. Brad Brayton Babcock is in. Left-handed 
pitcher. Six foot five, 250 pound senior out of Ontario, Canada, by way of Southern Illinois. On the year, he has a 3.57 ERA, 2 0 record. This will be his 10th appearance, all in relief. Has pitched 17 and two thirds innings, given him 15 hits, seven earned runs, six walks, 19 strikeouts. Opponents hitting 231 against the senior left hander. Strikeout pitcher, that long man. Back to back, 6 5 pitchers thrown at the Mule Riders here. Righty, now a lefty. 6 5, 250s. Hilton. Lefty against lefty here is 2 3 and 4 hitters due up for SAU. Brendan McGee leads it off. Left handed hitting Mule Rider catcher. Catcher goes out to talk to his pitcher, Babcock. Boy, after a three having a conversation, telling him that. Trailing by score nine to five, and after the Mule Riders got the Ichabods three up, three down, you would really feel a shot in the arm here if the Mule Riders could put another run or two on the board, especially after that three home run bottom of the third inning. The pitch to McKee, who squares to butt, takes it back low. He was trying to take advantage as the shift was employed against the left handed hitting catcher. He was going to try to bunt one down the third base line where he could walk to first yeah, base. There was nobody. Let's see if what idea he has here. One ball, no strikes. F. Cox pitch. He wasn't bunting that time. No, that was foul back <laughs> to the screen. That was, that was a massive swing, but he didn't he didn't hit it solidly and he fouled it back. See if the Mule Riders can do some damage. Like you said, the meat of the order coming up, two, three, four. Mule Riders trailing by five, or by four, rather. Still a long way to go. Babcock's pitch, that one up and out of the zone. Every game with Spotlight of Mule Rider. Join us later on for our Bod Call Bank Mule Rider Spotlight. Bod Call Bank, local bank, local people. They're in Magnolia. They're in Stamps. They're in Texarkana. Local bank, local people at Bot Call Bank. The 2-1. That one up in the zone. 3-1 and one is the count. Do you know what an Ichabod is? You told me earlier. It's a, oh, that's it's right. I've already quizzed you. Yeah. yeah. I could have made myself look real smart there. <laughs> you could? Well, I don't know. Let's not, let's not push it there. 3-1, that one fouled out of play as McGee was given a mighty hack at the 3-1 fastball, but it was outside, and he goes to a knee to foul that one off. I had looked, looked it up at one point, wasn't it? A Ichabod Washburn evidently was essentially the endowment for... Ichabod Washburn, so it's Washburn University. And their nickname, the their mas the mascot is the Ichabods. Yeah, Actually, it's original for twenty-five thousand bucks back in the. There's a walk. Brett McGee's the leadoff man for the Mule Riders in the bottom of the fourth, and he is on. Yeah, I dare say there are two teams playing here t this tonight that uh, you, you won't find the another of in the United States. Is there another no one? There can't be. There's just yeah. no, no way. I know there are no other Mule Riders. Yeah. That's copyrighted here at SAU. Yeah. Actually, there are mules. They got the Central Missouri mules. mules. Yeah, it's always fun. There, there, the there are other mules, but uh, there are no other mule riders that I'm aware of. McGee, a healthy lead over at first base. Brandon Nickel to the plate. Bad. Babcock comes set, comes home off speed pitch. That went up and out for ball one. Mule riders got their name for folks that don't know. There's a town called McNeil out north here and the train came through McNeil so the mule riders would they weren't called mule riders back then but the teams used to ride the mules up to McNeil to catch the train pitch outside 2-0 and oh. somebody said there go those mule riders and the name stuck that's the short version with Washburn is there goes the Ichabods located in Topeka Kansas Babcock comes set. Long look at first. Comes home inside, and the count is 3-0. Babcock in danger of walking the first two men here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Let's 
see. You think, I think Nichols got the green light here? 3-0, and and Nickel could make this a two-run ball game quickly. 3-0, fastball, that pretty generous call on the, we'll call it, near the inside corner. Kobe, Kobe, the Kobe Morris, the first base coach for the Mule Riders, went out and talked to Brett McGee on the previous pitch. He's got a stopwatch over, so he's telling him how much time it takes to deliver. 3-1 low, and there's another walk. First two men aboard for the Mule Riders via a walk, and that brings up the cleanup hitter, Jacob Machuca. Well, Mule Riders now, they need to... Uh, Bring some of those guys around. Two of the walks that Adorno had given up came in to score for, for the Ichabods. See if the Mule Riders can do that. The first two batters walk. Now, it's bad enough to walk the leadoff batter in an inning, but when you walk the first two, you would expect that that would be double good, trouble. Good things have to happen. Machuca to the plate, a 338 average on the season. He has got 10 home runs. 37 runs batted in. He is one for two. Lefty versus lefty here. Babcock comes set. Look out towards McGee. Second comes home. That one outside for ball one. Nine to five. What will the score of this one be when it's over? Well, I hope in a couple of pitches it may be nine eight, but. We shall see. Babcock right now for Washburn having a tough time finding the strike zone. Again comes set. A look over towards second base. Fastball, that one lifted, and that's shallow. That is going to be in the infield. Infield fly rule in effect, and there is one out. Really about the one thing you didn't want to do there was either pop up in the infield or ground into a double play. And yeah, we'll take that over the double play, yeah. but still, that gives an out, and now that's, that makes a double play a possibility. It does. Ty Manning comes to the plate. He's 0 for 2, a couple of strikeouts, so Ty Manning is definitely due. Manning, 341 average. Right-handed hitting center fielder for SAU. Babcox pitch inside for ball one. Good to see a ball there. He's good. Seemed like both, I think both of his previous events, he got in the hole 0-2 very quickly and ended up striking out battled, both times. Battled back in both counts, but you're right, ultimately went down by strikeout. Now has the opportunity to work ahead. 1-0. Babcock's pitch, fastball, that one drilled out in the left center field gap, and unfortunately, it hangs up. I thought that was hit a little better than it was as the left fielder, Bruce, able to get a really good jump on it, get over and make the catch in left center field. Looked like it was dying as yeah. he was running over into the gap there, but he was able to get there in time. It held up just enough for him. It's going to be up to Tucker Burton if the Mule Riders want to do any damage after the first two men reached on walks you do not want to let this opportunity pass tucker burton the mule rider designated hitter last time up he hit one a country mile over the right field wall a little different here with the lefty versus lefty matchup babcock comes home that one high and outside i think the scouting report is thou shalt not go inside to tucker burton yeah, that wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> it's kind of the 11th commandment has been issued after that monster shot. I think we finally figured out it was Jeff Harrington that estimated it at 427 to the bridge, which means there's no way that's accurate. Yeah. The 1 0 pitch outside. Tucker Burton chases it, however, fouls it off to the parking lot. I think Burton just kind of feels like he's in the zone, and if it's close, he's wanting to do some damage. Yeah, I think it's closer to 500 than 427 or 425 <laughs> or whatever he said. And really, time you figure in that parking lot out there. and We could measure to the bridge, bridge. We, we at least know kind of a starting point. 
One ball, one strike. The count there are two out, two men aboard. Mule Riders trailing by a score of nine to five. Babcock, couple looks over at second, comes home. That was a good pitch. And evidently, it missed the zone outside. It's kind of surprised that one didn't get called, I'll be honest. I, I kind of wish they would turn the scoreboard off on the football field. That, that's, it is it's the distracting. Light. I agree. It, every now and then it flashes, and you think it's lightning or something. But it's, it's I finally figured out it's the scoreboard out there, the football scoreboard, with its back turned toward the baseball field, but it reflects off that uh, facility out there. Two balls, one strike. That one hit out towards left field, but that's going to be playable as the left fielder Bruce takes a couple of steps back and makes the catch. So the Mule Riders, no runs, no hits, no errors, two left on base. So he left the first two walks of the inning on. As we head to the top of the fifth inning, it's Washburn 9 and the Mule Riders 5. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. It's a blast, and your vehicle is free. Rocket Fast Unlimited Wash Plans are the best way to keep your car spotless. Now our washes and plans are even more affordable. Did you know you can purchase our Fast Pass for the price of a single wash? That's right. Wash your car as many times as you want for 30 days for the price of a single wash. There has never been a better time to get your Fast Pass. Join thousands of others who already enjoy unlimited washing at all of our locations. Rocket Fast, the fast and easy way to wash your car. Magnolia Travel Center is the place to be. Get a spring in your step with our Flavor to Cup coffee machine that will have you ready for whatever the day brings. Also try the Flavor Shop Fountain Center with over 250 drink combinations. Happy hour from 2 till 6 p.m. How about the frozen yogurt with topping bar? Hot dogs, daily breakfast and champs, chicken, home-style lunch combos, kids' meals, and more. Grab and go with our fresh fruit, salads, and pizza. Served all day. It's all happening in Magnolia Travel Center. Follow us on Facebook for updates. Hi folks, Jim Golden with Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we say what we do and we do what we say. Honesty and integrity are the basis that our business is built on. At Jim Golden Ford Lincoln, we believe in our community and support our local churches, schools, charities through donations and individual efforts. Our award-winning sales and service department attest to the fact our customers are the number one priority. Take advantage of hometown deals and service where the dealer makes the difference at Jim Golden Ford Lincoln in Camden. We are through four here at Southern Arkansas University. New Riders trailing the Ichabods by a score of 9-5. to five. One thing has been determined, and that's really the only thing that's been determined so far, is that Jeremy Adorno, who was perfect getting a win with every start this year, he will not get a win in this game. That's true. But the not hope to is say that the Mule Riders won't get a win, but Adorno will not pick up the win. Let's hope it's a He was decision. pulled after three innings, yeah. In the fifth for the Ichabods, it'll be Cross Bay, Connor Scott, and Cal Watkins as they go back to the top of the order. First pitch, fastball in there, first strike from Hayden Abel. He came on last inning, Abel did, in relief of Adorno, who really struggled through three innings here tonight at SAU. Giving up nine runs, three home runs. It's an off-speed pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Yeah, the hitter, his bottom hand came off the bat, so he's asking for some pine tar or stick em or something. As his hand comes flying off. Well, as we go here, we'll give you our Magnolia Regional Medical Center mid-game summary. The Magnolia Murphy Clinic, you always feel like family. They treat adults ages 18 and over and specialize in wellness checks and illness recovery. Call for an appointment at 234-7101. 234-7101. Hitter steps back in. The pitch to Bay. It's outside. And it's a one ball, two strike count. Well, for Washburn, it's nine runs, nine hits, no errors, four men left on. For Southern Arkansas, five runs, eight hits, one error. And the Muir Riders have left seven men on base. Left them loaded in the first, left two on in the second, left two on in the fourth after back-to-back -back walks to start the inning. Neither ever advanced in that inning. Pitch outside. It's two balls, two strikes. Had an infield pop-up and 
couple of fly ball outs to left to retire SAU after the two walks to lead off that fourth inning. Give me the pitching numbers here. The pitch comes, foul back, out of play. Count stays two balls, two strikes. Adorno, as we said, pulled after three. He gave up nine hits, nine runs, six of those earned. He walked three, struck out four, threw two wild pitches. All, all of those just really un-Jeremy Adorno numbers. Gave up three home runs. There's a foul back. Still 2-2. Now, Habel, he's pitched one full inning and on here in the, in the fifth for his second inning of work. Threw one. He had one strikeout. No base runners allowed as he got him one, two, three in the fourth. Over on the other side, as the hitter steps back in, cross bay. And the 2 2 pitch from Habel. That's a little slow roller down the left side, goes foul. And the pitching category for the Ichabods. Stewart, the starter, went three innings, gave up eight hits, five runs. They were all earned. He walked two, struck out seven. He threw one wild pitch. He gave up three home runs as well. So both starters in this game lasted only three innings and both gave up three home runs. Babcock worked an inning. He's walked two, but has not allowed a run. There's a breaking pitch that just misses. Count goes full. Three balls, two strikes. The uh, Ichabods with home runs from Ingram, Waterbury, and Dunn. They're two, three, and four hitters in their order. And a two-run shot for Ingram, two three-run shots for Waterbury and Dunn. The pitch comes. It's high, ball four. It started out good, and then, unfortunately, the bat ends with the leadoff walk. And we'll bring up Connor Scott, their number nine here. Mule Riders, the three home runs came from the lower end of the order as Tyler Burton, Chris Lyles and Riley Orr each hit home runs. They're the final three of the final four batters in the order for SAU. And unfortunately, they were all solos. So it's nine to five. There's a bunt, one hop back to the mound. Turns, throws to second, he throws it into center field. The runner will go from first to third. There's another error. The second error of the ball game for SAU. That came back to the pitcher, Abel, so quickly that he had time, and I think he rushed the throw, and he threw it threw it wide to the third base side. Yeah, and he was kind of falling away towards the first base side, which I think caused him to kind of drift the throw to the left of the second base bag, and Raleigh Orr had, had no shot at corralling that one. So, the first two batters have reached... And now, we got runners at first and third with nobody out. Top of the order with Cal Watkins. Here's the pitch to him, swing and a miss at an off speed pitch. Yeah, good curve ball there. Had Watkins way out in front. On a night where too many things have gone against him, you don't need your defense to, uh, to commit errors. And the Mirror Riders have committed a couple. The first one was. Very costly, and this one has the potential to be. The 0-1. Looked at it outside. One ball, one strike. Nickel with uh, most home, most runs batted in, rather, for SAU. He's got a sack fly and an RBI single. Only near rider with more than one RBI. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Watkins. That's in the air out to center field. Coming in, Manning makes the catch. Tag at third. Throw toward the plate. On one hop, a swipe tag, but not in time as the runner scores. Bay scores from third base. And the runner stayed at first base, surprisingly. Yeah, didn't miss it by much. Is Bay able to get in just under the tag of Brett McGee? Strong throw from Ty Manning coming in. I'm amazed that Scott stayed at first base because that ball, there was nobody that was gonna could possibly cut that. 
and, uh, and he stayed at first. So double play opportunity there with Brett Ingram at the plate. Yeah, how about a double play? Ten to five now. Washburn leading SAU. Here's the pitch from Abel. Tie for ball one. Ingram singled and homered. So he's driven in two and he has scored two. Runner gets his lead at first. One man out. And the pitch from Habel on the way. That is low. Brett McGee took a look at first. Thought about throwing behind the runner. Did not. Again, the error comes back to uh, haunt the mule riders. I guess technically the walk and the error after Bay was put on with the walk and the error allowed him to go from first to third. Here's the pitch. It's high. Three balls, no strikes to Ingram. Yeah, the other error that was committed by the Muir Riders was the leadoff batter in the third. An error on the shortstop nickel allowed him to reach, and he came around to score later on the three-run bomb from Quinn Waterbury. Also, a, a walk came in to score there ahead of Waterbury. 3-0 pitch. Breaking pitch in there first strike, 3-1. and one. Looked like he was taken all the way on that breaking pitch. I think you were probably correct. Well, when Jeremy Adorno pitches, you don't normally see the other team score 10 runs, but they have tonight. Here's the pitch. That's a chopper to second, and Sutton tags, throws to first for the double play. So that takes care of the Ichabods in the top of the fifth inning. The double play. They score one run in the inning on no base hits. There were there was one error and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Ten to five Washburn. This is Mere Rudder Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. Christy Way, owner of Mule Kick in Magnolia. Everybody knows that Mule Kick was voted one of Arkansas's top dining experiences for the past two years. But did you know that in addition to pizza and wings, craft beer and coffee, our managers have been expanding our catering ability to provide a perfect business lunch, either at your location or ours. Call 870-562-2600 today and ask for Matt or Jim. You can also visit MuleKickMag.com. It's Mule Kick, never business as usual. Bailey's Body Shop is your one-stop shop for collision repair. They can do it all, from handling the estimate for you to getting the information to your insurance company. Owner Danny Bailey has been doing auto body work for over 40 years, and Bailey Body Shop is built on quality and trust. You don't have to worry about it. They're there when you need them. When you need collision repair, trust Bailey's Body Shop, 2416 North Vine in Magnolia, 234-3303. Spotlight brought to you by Biden Call Bank, 2125 North Jackson in Magnolia, 307 Thomas Street in Stamps, and at 3625 Richmond Road in Texas Biden Call Bank, serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. Local bank, local people enjoy the benefits of hometown banking at Biden Call Bank. We'll give that to you as we go here. Mew Riders with the bottom three in the order due up here in the bottom of the fifth. Chris Lyles, Connor Allen, and Riley Orr to face Braden Babcock. And Babcock's pitch, a swing and a miss for strike one. In our mod call bank, Neil Rutter's spotlight is Alexis Martin, who uh, competes in sprints, jumps, and hurdles for the SAU track team. She's a sophomore from Magnolia, majoring in early education. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Interests in extracurricular activities include choral program. After she graduates, plans to go into coaching after she gets her bachelor's degree in education. Favorite moment as a mule rider, being able to compete and being blessed with an opportunity that could change her life and career. Alexis Martin 
Swing and a miss, strike three for Chris Lyles. Three pitches, three swings, and three misses. All well, three in the strike three. zone, just swings and misses. Brings Connor Allen to the plate. So again, our Mew Rider spotlight, Alexis Martin. Service of Bot Call Bank, serving us in South Arkansas since 1903. The hitter, Connor Allen, here's the pitch to him. Swing and a miss by him for strike one. This guy looks like he's yeah. settled in. Definitely dialed in. He's got swing and miss stuff. Again, these are in the strike zone, and the rider's just unable to put the bat on the ball. The 0-1, all speed. Ooh, stretched for that. Well, that's strike two call. That looked a little out of the strike zone. So he's quickly ahead of Connor Allen. No balls, two strikes. Allen has struck out twice in this game. Both times to the starting pitcher, Stewart. But he is in danger here. The 0-2 took it high for ball one. Riley Orr on deck. He's barely able to hold off that pitch. Here's the pitch coming. It's upstairs two and two. I'm going to drown, drown my sorrows with my Hall's cough drops. So. Yeah, sorry. They were out of the diet drink, so uh, you were out on that. The 2-2 pitch to Connor Allen. Braden Babcock coming. And it's pulled foul to the third base dugout. Go ahead and shake the Ichabods up over there. Eight forty-seven. I think this will may go longer than three hours. We're well over two hours already. There's a chopper towards short charging. Watkins sets, throws low, but a good scoop on a short hop over at first base by Waterbury. Yeah, I give Waterbury credit. That was a that was a good scoop over there at first base. So there are two out, and Riley over to the plate for SAU. He is singled and homered. The Riders have really just had the one. Well, I take that back. They've had they had base runners on. They left left the bases loaded in the first inning. Left two on in the second inning. Left two on in the fourth inning. So they've had base runners. They just hadn't been able to get enough of those big hits with with runners on base pitch outside for ball one all right i finally figured it out quinn waterbury and connor allen have had a lot of discussion when they've been on the bases they were i think both played at plano at least both graduated from high school there so they must know each other from playing baseball in that part of the world okay it was appeared to be friendly banter both times back and forth one ball, one strike to Orr. Up and away with the next pitch, two and one. Well, if Orr can get on base, we'll go back to the top of the order. Chris Sutton on deck. Here comes Babcock's pitch. Fastball, I just missed. Outside. I didn't stop him before. <laughs> 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 That's it's closer than I would have taken. Of course, it, 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 pretty good pop on that fastball. He didn't have much time to, to swing. Here comes the next one. That one, he gets a bat on and fouls it back. You know, Raleigh's wanting to hit. He is two for two and hit the ball hard both times, including the home run last time up. Three balls, two strikes. That cups, he's got impressive numbers on the season. And worked a huge amount of innings. Payoff pitch and Orr off the fist. Pops it up out towards center field. And it went a little farther than I thought it would have. Make the wind caught it a little bit, but center fielder Scott makes the catch. And three up, three down for SAU in the bottom half of the fifth. Ten to five, Washburn. This is Beer Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. 
reflect the dream team at People's Bank Health. Since 1910, we've helped customers afford the home of their dreams, and we love what we do. People's Bank has some of the lowest interest rates around, even lower than what you might find online. With the down payments as low as 5%, our experienced and friendly loan officers make home ownership easy and affordable. Put our dream team to work for you. Come by or give us a call at 234-5777. People's Bank, building dreams one loan at a time. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. It's Blossom Festival week, and you'll save all week at Jennifer's on the Square. All clothing is 20% off all week. All of Jennifer's beautiful fashions, 20% off through Saturday. Jennifer's has received lots of new spring outfits, new linen outfits for summer, and new denim pants and shorts. Jennifer's also has Blossom Festival t-shirts and steak tickets. And check out their sidewalk sale Friday and Saturday at Jennifer's on the south side of the Magnolia Square. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, the experienced team at Southern Caregivers provides expert care to you and your loved ones. Southern Caregivers also provides needed support for seniors, allowing them to remain in the comfort of their own home and maintain their independence. Nurturing and caring companions can be matched to meet emotional, spiritual, and physical needs of the individuals they care for. Call 501-463-9990 today and speak with one of our professionals or visit southerncaregiversar.com. some runs in that, in yeah. that conference tournament. Pitch comes in the dirt. Ball one to Quinn Waterbury. He's leading off the sixth inning, bottom or top of the sixth, rather, for for Washburn. And we're getting pretty late in this one yeah. now. Starting to get a little worried about these mirror riders down 10 to 5. Can't really afford to let Washburn put any more distance between us. Low and away, ball two. Yeah, don't want to lead off, guy. Yeah, that has not been a good recipe. Every time somebody's been walked for these guys, somebody with a big bat has brought him around to score. The 2-0. There's a strike, two and one. Yeah, we talked about it, the difference in the game. Your Riders down by five, each team with three home runs. On the three home runs that Washburn has hit, they've scored eight. On the three that we've hit, we've scored three. So... There's your difference. Swing and a miss. Strike two. The, uh, it looks like we've given up four walks. Three of them have come around to score in this game so far. A 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. At a breaking pitch. Down on strikes goes Waterbury. One away. Here in the top of the six, Parker Dunn comes to the plate. With a big bat. Parker Dunn. Now their home runs have come from their two, three, and four hitters, Ingram, Waterbury, and Dunn. Dunn also bats from the left side, so lefty against lefty. With Hable out on the mound, the pitch on the way, and that's a strike at the knees in the inner part of the plate. Well, Larry Lundin, I hope you're feeling better. H couldn't make it to the game, but uh, tonight would not have been the night anyway. So, oh, If he'd have been here, the luck totally would have been changed. Check swing at a pitch in the dirt. They're going to appeal. They said no. Third base umpire said no, he didn't. He's got a better angle, but man, it sure looked like from here he went. He shouldn't have. It was a terrible pitch, but. Yeah, Larry's probably got, he probably got a little, little mule rider look left in him. 87 was a long time ago, though. <laughs> Don't we all know, Larry? 
One one pitch. Here's the breaking pitch. I guess low. Kind of squeezing him a little bit here. Two that we have not gotten calls on the swing and then the. I'm with you. I think that pitch was in the zone. I know the Mule Rider fans below us think so. Two one pitch. He checked a high fastball. They're going to appeal again. He didn't hardly take it off his shoulder that time. So it's three and one to Parker Dunn. With one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Hopefully Adorno will get another opportunity. 3-1 pitch. That's hit deep to center. Manning backing up, though. Has it measured, and he makes the catch. Dunn is retired. Ball hit well, just not carrying quite as far as it was in the heat of the day. And that one didn't really get up into the wind maybe as much either, but wind still appears to be blowing pretty good out to center field. I don't know if he didn't quite get that one off the sweet spot or what, but uh, sounded solid. Yeah, I, I agree. No, wind definitely still blowing out. Pitch from Habel to Bowen. Strike one. Swing and a miss. Bowen's one for one for three. Ten to five. Washburn leading SAU here in the top of the sixth inning. Habel's pitch. Bounced it back to the backstop. Yeah, that, that football scoreboard is driving me crazy. I can't I cannot imagine. That that's it's, not not affecting the hitters. When all of a sudden you get a big flash well, we off got, of that uh, Dawson complex. Yeah, we've there. got a little different perspective just because we're up higher. But I, I'm with you. I would be concerned about that being distracting to the hitter. Not at this particular moment. But there's a hard hit ground ball to the left of Moore. Can't come up with it. Just came up off the heel of his glove and out into center field. So Bowling is aboard with two out. For as a tough play, probably going to be an error, but that thing took a bad bounce as Riley Orr was racing over. It would have been an outstanding play. Let's see how they score that. I think Coach Pettigrew would say you got to you got to make those plays, but there's I think they're debating uh, next door. Clark, I think the brain trust is getting together. Tyler Clark Chaparelli to the plate for Washburn. Still have not seen a ruling on it. One on, two out. Runner goes, throw down, and it short hops Sutton and out into center field, and the runner will advance to third. So there's an error for sure on the throw that skipped into Sutton. Really, it wasn't a bad throw. It's where you want it. Unfortunately, the ball and the runner arrived at the same time and interfered with Sutton being able to glove it. I would say that would be... An error there on the throw. Well, you have to give an error for the runner to go third. Wow. But even on the and on the hit too, probably should go with an error. But still waiting to see. Yeah, they haven't haven't scored it yet. But the runner's standing over third base now. Stolen base and an error gets him to third. The pitch down low. No error, no can't allow to get that that runner to score yeah you're exactly right cannot afford They're, to give up any they, more they ground. gave bowling a single did the, okay I, I don't have terrible heartburn with that it, it came up on him but yeah it did still hit him off the heel of the glove here's the pitch that's popped up to the right side maybe playable for the mule rider first baseman machuca he backs up and it he overran it a little i think actually the wind caught it as he was coming over toward the wall on the other side of the dugout, and then all of a sudden he had to kind of try to go back after it. I think the wind maybe caught it and blew it back behind him. Yeah, I think so. I think he thought that was going to be well out of play. It was racing over there to get to the wall to find it, and then it ends up blowing back well in play. And that's a play that won't go down yeah. as an error, but again, that's another out, out that's got to be recorded. But you're battling the wind. 
And you got to battle back here and keep that next run off the board. There's a little flare out in the right field. Connor Allen there, Muretter right fielder, and he'll make the catch. And that will indeed retire the, the Ichabods here in the top of the sixth inning. It was, it was a battle. No runs, one hit, one error, one man left. We go to the bottom of the sixth, 10 to 5. Ichabods. This is Muretter Baseball, Magnolia's Country 99.1. Your locally owned and operated Domino's is open. Domino's is open for carryout at the drive through and delivery. Domino's has contactless options for delivery as well as carryout. Call Domino's in Magnolia at 870-234-4141 or order online at dominoes.com. Domino's is open 1030 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 1030 to midnight Friday and Saturday. Domino's on East Main and Magnolia. Thank you for shopping all local businesses. Today is the day. After countless hours of research, cutting back expenses, and nine months of anxiously waiting for her, today is the day you finally bring home your new car. It's also the day to protect her with an auto policy from Shelter Insurance. Our policies are competitively priced and include new car replacement coverage if anything were to happen to your new baby. Ask shelter agent Gary Dunfera about shelter's competitive auto insurance rates. Locally owned and operated, Wilson Beard and Pharmacy now offers medical synchronization so that you can pick up your meds on the same day each month. They also offer free delivery in city limits. Vaccines for shingles, pneumonia, and COVID-19 are also available. Need a gift? Check out Wilson Beard's variety of knives, flags, girly girl tees, and purses. Stop by and see Ivy Moore and her team at Wilson Beard and Pharmacy, 134 North Washington, serving Magnolia since 1945. <laughs> Southern Arkansas in the bottom of the sixth inning. At the top of the order up, Chris Sutton, Brett McGee, Brandon Nickel. And need to get a few more. Yeah, now's the time to do it. You got the leadoff man up. Let's make it happen. Pitch to Sutton, breaking pitch, strike one on the inside part of the plate. Feel like the strike zone is changing. Every time that Every time it gets brighter and flashes off that building, I look up. I guess I'm worried about lightning. We could have some late in the weekend. There's a pop-up right side out of play. Look out, folks. Ooh, somebody booted that one out there. Somebody almost grabbed it. Got a hand on it, a bare hand. Dropped it. Sutton won for three in the game. The pitch is popped up against about the same location. Might get another shot at it. Oh. No, a little bit by if now if he'd if he'd have gone after it, I think I think I think whoever that is didn't want to didn't want to boot it twice. Yeah, Je <laughs> Jeffrey Jester was down in that direction. He appeared to be getting out of the way. Here's the 0-2. That hit him. That hit Sutton. Yeah, that came in on him and well, that's one you definitely don't mind taking. That kind of skipped in and hit him when you're down in the count. No balls, two strikes. So that one, pretty much a gift. So the leadoff man is on for SAU. Chris Sutton, he's got a pretty high on-base percentage. Flirting with 500 all year on his on-base percentage. Can almost guarantee you he doesn't mind taking that one on an 0-2 count. Oh, no. <laughs> Brett McGee at the plate now. He is single and he's walked twice. Sutton gets a good lead. Against the lefty out there on the mound looking him back. There's one popped up off the bat of McGee out into center field. Scott under it and he makes the catch. It was a major league fly ball, but just got underneath it and didn't quite drive it out to let the wind help usher it out of the out of the field. Brandon Nickel now. Now batting. Brandon the third baseman number seven. Sack fly and an RBI single and a walk. So far in this game. I say you down by five, ten to five. Bottom of the sixth inning. They got the leadoff man on here with a hit by pitch. 
But now one out. Big lead for Sutton. Pitch swung on, fouled off right side, out of play. Plus some innings you look back at it, that that fourth inning when the first two batters walked. Yeah. He had two on, nobody out. Had an infield pop up and and then a couple of fly balls to left. So runners, neither one of those runners advanced after the after the two walks. Left the bases loaded in the bottom of the first. Yeah, there's Mill Riders have had some some opportunities and still gonna have some opportunities out in front of them. But you're right. One strike that pitch high, I believe. Game's getting late, so you really got to start taking advantage now. Left seven on base in this game. Snap throw to first, runners back. After the game, we'll have our Farm Bureau post-game show. Farm Bureau's deductible rewards program rewards their safe drivers with earning percentage credits on their deductibles. The only rewards program of its kind in the state. To learn more, go to AFBIC.com slash drive down. The pitch outside. He took a good look at it, Nickel he, did. He did. I'm Thought about he, stretching after it. Glad he didn't. He would have needed a big stretch to go get that one. You need one of those telescoping bats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two balls, one strike to Brandon Nickel. And the pitch from Babcock. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Two balls, two strikes. Troy Mitchell's a glutton for punishment. He worked the GAC tournament at, at Hot Springs. Then he worked the 5A state tournament there. And now he's in Bentonville statting all of the championship games. Swing and a miss at a breaking pitch. Down on strikes goes Nickel. Two out. Jacob Machuca now to the plate. One for three on the evening. Bentonville beat Cabot in the 6A softball final. Babcock has not he hadn't allowed a hit yet, has he? Nope. No, he has not. He's walked a couple and hit a batter, but he has not given up a hit. Pitch comes, foul back, out of play, off the bat of Machuca. Ty Manning on deck. I say he was since that three home run inning in the third, and they went to the bullpen and brought in Babcock. First thing he did is walk two batters, and he thought, well, maybe we can get yeah. to this guy, but he has been dominant ever since. Throw to first, runners back. The only runner that's reached since those initial two walks is that hit by pitch to start this inning. And Sutton now with two outs still standing over there at first base. He gets a big lead. The pitch to Machuca fouled at the plate. Well, Washtenaw Baptist was up five to nothing in the bottom of the ninth. It is now five four with two outs. So the Mules not going softly into that good night. Yeah, they're playing on their playing at Central Missouri and Warrensburg. Well, hopefully we get some late inning heroics yeah. from the Mule Riders. The 0-2 pitch outside to Machuca. It's a one ball, two strike count. Am I the only one in the park that that Scoreboard's bothering. It just it's driving me crazy. I think you're just like <laughs> focused and obsessed. <laughs> no, I'm really sport. not. I look down. I, I, I'm looking doing something else, and all of a sudden it flashes, and, and then I look up. Pitch to Machuca. Tried to check, but he went around, and that's strike three. So Machuca strikes out, and SAU comes up empty in the sixth after an initial hit by pitch. The next three are retired. And we played six. SAU trailing 10 to 5. This is Beer Rider Baseball in Magnolia's Country 99.1. Magnolia Regional Medical
Medical Center is excited about the addition of orthopedic surgeon Dr. James Kevin Rudder. Dr. Rudder grew up in South Arkansas and has been practicing for the last 20 years in Hot Springs. Dr. Rudder provides full orthopedic services with specialization in joint replacements. Also, sports medicine and sports injury and orthopedic trauma, including breaks and fractures. Referrals or appointments are accepted. Call the Magnolia Surgical Clinic at 870-235-3200. Hey, you. Yeah, you. It's time to step up to the plate at the Corner Clubhouse on the Magnolia Square. Remember, it's a short stop away to experience delicious pulled pork smoked in-house, baked potatoes, burgers, a full bar, and the best ribeyes cut in-house over an open flame. The Corner Clubhouse is open Monday through Saturdays, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Don't strike out. Satisfy your cravings with a grand slam at the Corner Clubhouse, 100 South Washington in Magnolia. Hiring someone you trust can be the hardest part of owning a business. At Omos' Trucking, trust has been at the top of our list. When you need to get precious cargo from one place to another without worrying about damage, delays, or lost freight, Omos' Trucking is the one to count on. Based in Magnolia, Arkansas, since 1999, we have the resources and equipment to take care of all your flatbed freight hauling. Visit us on Facebook or call 870-234-2803. Omos' Trucking. Trust us to go the distance. After the game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. For you lock in a mortgage rate online, talk to People's Bank first. People's Bank offers great rates on mortgage loans for a new home purchase and refinancing. Plus, People's Bank makes it so easy by being with you every step of the way. People's Bank, equal housing lender and member FDIC. Seven, eight, and nine hitters do up for Washburn. As evidently the comments are flowing freely about the backlight on the scoreboard. First pitch way up in the zone. Hayden Hable back to the mound for SAU. Easton Bruce, the left fielder for the Ichabods at the plate. Bruce is one for three. Washita held on. They did? Yeah. Okay. 5-4. Next pitch. Catches the outside corner. That was actually a generous call to our benefit. Even count one ball, one strike. So Washita, who was the eighth seed in the Central Region. Barely made it in, yeah. Knocks off the number one seed, Central Missouri. The 1-1 pitch. That one driven out towards right field, but not deep enough. As Connor Allen drifts back a few steps and makes the catch for out number one. So, yeah, you got the Central Missouri that goes down here. Washburn, the seventh seed, and right the now, the it's who's seed mule riders. It's just uh, get out in one game. Who knows? Yeah. It, things things can happen. On That's why you play the games, I guess. You don't yeah, do them on right. paper. Drop it into the loser's bracket. Uh, not impossible. We've seen the mule riders do that before. Just makes it, uh, makes it a little more difficult, a little more entertaining. But, yeah, really, te really, you know, test the depth of your pitching staff. Uh, it, puts, it puts, you know, Washburn and Henderson, whoever wins that matchup tomorrow. You know, they're, of course, they're, they're in the, the catchers. So, yeah. Uh, as you stay, if, if you don't lose, you can win three games and, and win it. Yeah. If you get in the loser's bracket, you got you got to play five games. 1-0 pitch up and in. Ball two. Pretty. It did almost hit him. It's the catcher across Bay at the plate. I think Bay was trying to say maybe that nicked him, but he did not get the call. However, he is ahead in the count, 2-0. That one way outside, and the count goes 3-0. We talked about it coming into the inning. Habel has done really good work for SAU out of the bullpen. The question is, how long can he go? came in to this game only having pitched seven innings for the season. He has gone three complete innings. Now working into the seventh. The 3-0 pitch. There's a fastball. Goodwin catches the outside corner for called strike one. 
Shannon, I appreciate your concern. <laughs> oh, Shannon's the one that was doing the texting? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's bothering Jeff, too. It would be bothering you, Shannon. I know it would. 3-1, fastball lifted towards right. Connor Allen coming in, makes the catch. Two up, two down, both retired by Connor Allen in right field. I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get to that one. Well, he started out. I didn't think it was going to. I didn't think it would hang up that long. Then he ends up actually being able to kind of ease off and glide underneath it. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Connor Scott. He is 0 for 3. He did reach via an error back in the fifth inning. Abel trying to work a 1 2 3 top of the seventh. Pitch took something off that one and got Scott way out in front. Good pitch for strike one. Give your riders trailing by a score of 10 to 5, top of the seventh inning. Abel's pitch foul towards the on deck circle, and the on deck hitter almost made a nice bare hand snag. Of course, I'm trying to see who that is. That you would expect that. That's Cal Watkins on deck, the shortstop. So normally your shortstop has decent hands. He <laughs> better. Yeah. He's looking yeah. at his hand like it betrayed him. Pitch that one dribbled out towards short. Riley or gloves throws across. Three up, three down go the Ichabods in the top of the seventh as we head into the seventh inning stretch. Buell Riders trailing the Ichabods by a score of 10 to 5. You're listening to Buell Rider Baseball on Magnolia's Country 99.1. I'm Faith Armstrong. If you worry about your safety or your loved ones, Columbia County Ambulance Service would like you to know about CareLink. CareLink provides an instant link to emergency response every minute, every day. The standard version provides protection surrounding the home, and a mobile unit offers protection anywhere. The area covered includes Columbia, Hempstead, Nevada, Washita, Lafayette Counties, and Claiborne Parish. Call Columbia County Ambulance today to schedule your installation. Since 1906, Farmers Bank and Trust has served customers throughout South Arkansas. This year, we've added nine new communities in Arkansas and Oklahoma. We're committed to serving and investing in our new and legacy communities. In Magnolia, we're not the new bank in town, but you've always made us feel at home. When you need a bank perfect for your season of life, come home to Farmers Bank and Trust. Visit myfarmers.bank to learn more. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Living. Seventh inning, Buell Riders trailing by score of 10 to 5. And Buell Riders, time is running out. Need to strike for some runs here, but it's been an uphill battle with Braden Babcock since he has entered the game for the starter. Casey Stewart has been tough sledding. In fact, he has not given up a hit in his three innings. Time, Manny. It's going to be time. Manning, followed by Tucker Burton and Chris Lyles. I was taking a peek at their bullpen, hoping that somebody was throwing. So they bring somebody else in, because this guy, he's been lights out. He's been good. Your runner's able to get to Chris Stewart with three solo shots in the bottom of the third. That was it for him. And then Babcock comes in. First one fouled out of play down the left side. But yeah, since Babcock's come in, he is he's issued a couple of walks in the Hit by a pitch, but again, Buell Riders unable to record a hit off of him yet. Let's hope he's running out of steam here. I'm guessing these two pitchers we've seen from Washburn today, probably both of them big old 6'5 guys. They probably both played baseball, basketball, football, a lot of sports in high school. 0-1, oh, low and away. Evens count, 1-1. One one. Ty Manning looking for his first hit of the evening. Your riders five runs off eight hits, three errors. Pitch one and one, low it away as Manning holds off. Two and one the count for Washburn. It's ten runs, ten hits, no errors. Two balls, one strike. Your riders need the leadoff man on here as Babcock shakes off the first sign, comes home. That one up in the zone. Three and one is the count to the Mule Rider center fielder. Over on the football stadium, 
on the visitor side over there. It was the guy standing up at the top earlier today, and I looked over there and I was ready to tell Coach Browning, say, Somebody, somebody's getting ready to to jump off the back of the stands over there, Coach. <laughs> 3-1, that one lifted high up in the air towards left. Left fielder coming in, is able to settle underneath it and make the catch. Yeah, that one way up in the air, but just got underneath it. Kind of in between there as the left fielder was coming in, shortstop going out. Left fielder made the call and recorded the out. It's going to bring up your rider designated hitter, Tucker Burton. Well, it yeah. turns out the guy wasn't trying to end it all. He was, they, he was, he was, he was one of a couple guys that were painting over there. They were painting. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, painting. I don't know if they were painting the seats. I think they were painting the seats blue. The pitch to Tucker Burton. That one lifted up and should get out of play. Foul. You've seen some major undercuts on this guy. Some pop up. Fortunately, that got out of play. Yeah. Burton again, one for two, officially. That long home run back in the third inning. That infield fly uh, that Machuca hit off of him after the two walks. Yeah, McGee that, had the high. Uh, in center field, yeah. That was a mile high. It's oh one and excuse me swing as that one is softly lined into the Washburn dugout. Burton behind in the count, 0-2. No action in the Washburn bullpen for very understandable reasons. Again, good job so far by the Mule Rider reliever, Hayden Habel. The 0-2 pitch in the dirt, and Burton does not chase. Yeah, you got to think here, if the Mule Riders don't come back, you are... Going to have to rely on a lot of depth with, with your pitching staff and want to use as little this evening as you can. And obviously, if the Mule Riders battle back and make this close, it becomes a different story. That one popped up towards the left side. That one is going to be in play as the third baseman makes the catch right in front of the wall. And there's the second out of the inning. Yeah, had the wind blowing the wrong direction there. It was blowing it out, and it maybe made it a little bit easier for him. Yeah. Might have blown it actually back in a little bit. Yeah, just wouldn't. I thought it was going to get out of play, but it just didn't quite make it. If the Mule Riders are going to do any damage here in the bottom of the seventh, Chris Lyles is going to have to extend the inning somehow, some way. Lyles also had a solo home run in the third. He is one for three. First pitch to him. Appeared to be inside. It's called a strike. Yes, so he's running out of outs. They've only got seven left. Seven left. Need five runs to tie if things stay where they are. Babcock's pitch. Swing and a miss by Lyles, and he is down in the count. Excuse me, evens the count. Never mind. Umpire says 0-2. Scoreboard said 1-1. Had some scoreboard issues tonight. Mm -hmm. Several. There's a lot of BS flying in there, I think. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yep, Jeff's still there. Yep. The 0 2. Fastball outside. Between Jeff and Connor. <laughs> <laughs> They're competing, competing to see who can, uh, who can tell the biggest story in there. A lot of Harrington influence in there. 1-2 as Babcock shakes off the first sign, likes the second one, comes home, off speed in the dirt. They appeal down to first. They Lyles did not go. So oh, I think he got a break there. I thought he went around myself. But. Well, even the count. Yeah, what do you know? That's a great call. He didn't go. <laughs> no, it was close. I he almost spun in the ground. <laughs> Bad head to go around. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes, two out, nobody on. Yes, so he'll hit a home run here. Your riders need something good to happen here. Call. Somebody called time. I think it was the catcher. Lyles steps out. Resets. Steps back in. Good 
2-2. That one hit out towards third. Third baseman able to scoop it, throw over to first, and got him by half a step. Lyles, I think, thinks that he may have beaten the throw there, but he is called out. So three up, three down go the Mule Riders in the bottom of the seventh as we head into the eighth inning. It's Washburn 10 and SAU 5. You're listening to Mule Rider Baseball. Magnolia, Columbia County. You may not be thinking much about retirement, but it's never too soon to start preparing. Talk to an Edward Jones financial advisor, Ethan Young, Mark Woods, Steve Hardy, or Laura Kroll, Edward Jones, member SIPC. Sweet Onion Steak Teriyaki is now available at Subway on East Main and Magnolia. Steak, cheese, onions, peppers, and Sweet Onion Teriyaki, and you can customize it as you like. Let me tell you about some other Subway heroes. Baja Steak and Jack, Honey Mustard, Rotisserie Style Chicken, Baja Chicken and Bacon, and Turkey Cali Fresh. Subway still has all your other favorites, too. Use the app like I do and earn rewards at Subway in University Plaza Shopping Center on East Main and Magnolia. Shake off winter with the all-new spring arrangements at Bridges on the Square. Located on the Magnolia Square, Bridges has arrangements like the watercolor blooms bouquet and the wonderful whimsy bouquet. Centerpieces are also available. Bridges helps with any occasion, anytime. Follow Bridges on the Square on Facebook and Instagram or visit BridgesOnTheSquare.com. Remember, you bring in the spring with Bridges on the Square, your Magnolia flower shop. Field at Southern Arkansas University. So we hit into the eighth inning. And so you trailing Washburn by a score of 10 to 5. Hayden Habel back to work for his fourth inning of work in relief of SAU starter Jeremy Adorno. Washburn new up here at the top of the eighth. Cal Watkins, Brett Ingram, and Quinn Waterbury. Two and three hitters for the Ichabods. And it's a U, the two seed, Washburn, the seven. We've already seen the number one seed, Central Missouri, fall at their regional site to Washita Baptist. By score five to four, Mule Riders trying to avoid that same fate. First pitch must have missed a little bit inside to Cal Watkins for ball one. Boy, if Hayden Habel can give the Mule Riders another inning or two, that would be huge. Next pitch, that one fouled back. One ball, one strike. Obviously, if the Mule Riders go into the loser's bracket, they're going to need to conserve as much pitching as possible. So, again, gotta keep your eye on this outing by Habel because if the Mule Riders do that, it will be in large part to Hayden Habel saving a lot of uh, pitches from the Mule Rider bullpen. The 1-1, one, one, a swing and a miss as he fools Watkins with the off-speed pitch. Count goes to 1-2. and two. The Mule Riders still have a chance. They hit the ball, hit the ball well early. Since the reliever Babcock came in, came in in relief of Casey Stewart, though, he has shut the Mule Riders down. 1-2, good curveball that drops into the zone is... Watkins goes down looking. Strikeout is out number one here at the top of the eighth inning. Brett Ingram, the third baseman, comes to the plate. He is two out of four. Had a single, a two, two run home run back in the second inning. Ingram at 12 home runs, second most on this Washburn team. First pitch in the dirt for ball one. By the way, happy birthday to Ken Cole. Head athletic trainer at Southern Arkansas University. For a little while more, he's getting ready to retire. Did you call old, him? Old Ken Cole. Old Ken, old Ken Cole. Cole was a merry old soul. Thought I heard that this morning. 1-0, fastball that's fouled back and out of play. He is officially a senior citizen. He joined your club? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say I beat you there again. <laughs> oh. 
I've been, I've been, I've been there a couple of years already. Hey, Bulls. Pitch. Not sure where that one missed. Must have been outside. Two and one the count. Abel, the left-hander from Benton, Louisiana. Next pitch is high, three and one. He's, you'll appreciate this. Ken Cole was riding with me on a trip out to uh, Oklahoma up the Indian Nation Turnpike. <laughs> did he fear for his life? <laughs> yes, he did. Yes. Okay. I, I can. I can't understand that. <laughs> The 3 1 pitch. Yeah, I do not have to worry about you starting a driving school. I, I think you're. You know, I'm not sure where that one missed. Anyway. Okay, it might have been up a little bit. You know, Brent Ingram, a couple pitches there that if they missed, they did not miss by much. <laughs> yeah, Ken was sitting in the passenger seat, and I've been down to pick something. I dropped something into the floor, so I got a bit or been down to pick it up. Smart man everywhere. Ken was, Dan, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing at the bridge. He couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get it out. Uh, uh, it was kind of veered off onto the shoulder there toward, toward, a, toward some concrete on the, on the side of that bridge. Throw over to first base, and Ingram is back standing up. So how can you worry too much? I got it under control. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Quinn Waterbury at the plate. <laughs> First baseman for Washburn. I don't think Ken ever rode to Oklahoma with me again after that. I'm shocked. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to close your eyes. <laughs> Ooh, able to throw her to first. That one was thrown well short. Machuca, an outstanding job of keeping that one from going to the wall. As you know, in Oklahoma, other people hit deer, and in Oklahoma, the deer hit me. <laughs> we, yes, I saw the deer do a U-turn and literally headbutt your door. Yeah. I can, I can verify that. I, that I happened. dodged him. I was driving yeah. him. Yeah, I, I dodged him, and then he turned around and made a U-turn, came back and rammed right in the side that of the That lifted yeah. and it's going to go foul. I thought that may stay in play momentarily, but it hits off the roof of the... It's a U locker room. Still got a little dent on the on, on my door. I can't believe it's not a bigger dent than it was. I can't either. It sounded sound like I got hit by a tank. So I think we hit it where somewhere between Alva and Enid at probably midnight, middle of nowhere. Down a back road, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's good old Oklahoma trips. The O one. Good pitch. I really thought Waterbury would offer at it. He held off. Good job by McGee to keep that ball in front. Normally in Oklahoma, it would drive the main roads, the turnpikes, the interstate, and all that. There is no would road never to hardly, Alva. Yeah, would never bad. hardly see a deer, but uh, we sure found one there. Found one on the back roads, or he found us. One ball, one strike. Hables pitch, fastball, good one. Ooh. Called strike two. I thought that might have been a little out, but that's okay. We'll yeah, take we it. We need it. a break. We need a lot of breaks at this point. We had a couple of letter strikes that, in my opinion, should have been called. So Shannon, quit snitching on me. By the way, <laughs> I go through there and and they're they're you're uh, <laughs> the one two strike and three called as Abel goes right back to that outside corner, perfect location, and they're now two out, two down, two strikeouts. We can't, even, can't even talk about her husband or her kid without her, without her snitching on us. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say we, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, I think I... You might have chimed in yeah, a little bit. There. I did. I did. That'll bring up left-handed hitting Parker Dunn. Lefty versus lefty. That curveball that stays inside for ball one. Dunn is the leading home run hitter for Washburn. Hit number 18 earlier this evening. Left-handed hitter stands in. Still runner on first. There's a called strike. Abel sticking with that outside corner. He's getting the call, so he's staying, staying out there with the fastball. Abel takes a look over at first base. Machuca holding the runner on. Comes home. Another fastball called strike two. 
After the game, we'll name our People's Bank player of the game. Bank on the go with People's Bank's mobile banking app. Check balances, deposit checks, view transactions, transfer money, pay bills. Find the nearest branch and more bank wherever you are with your local bank. People's Bank. Member FDIC. One ball, two strikes to count. The pitch found into the SAU dugout. Actually hits the bar in front of the SAU dugout and ends up down at the 330 sign and down the right field line. We'll try it again. Abel grabs a handful of dirt. Wipes it on his jersey. Checks the wristband for the sign coming in from the Mule Rider dugout. The lefty comes set. Throws over to first base. That is a ball. Yep. Actually started towards home and threw back. I'm not sure he did. he'd even come set. So the ball sends Brett Ingram to second base. He is now in scoring position. Still one ball, two strikes. Get the strike out here, none of that matters. <laughs> there's, a, there's a protest by one of the SAU fans with some color commentary. The one, two, that one lifted out towards right field. Connor Allen appears to have a beat on it. He does, he gloves it for out number three. To retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base as we head to the bottom of the eighth. It's Washburn 10 and SAU 5. You're listening to your Rider Baseball. Hey, friends. This is Lucas Cheatham. This time of year, everyone seems to be catching spring fever. Or if you need a little more spring in your step, then Health Plus Therapy is here for you. My mom and Christine and her team at Health Plus Therapy provide physical, occupational, and speech therapy. It will have you ready for those spring activities. Visit healthplustherapy.net or call today at 870-234-2255. Health Plus Therapy, 1515 East Main and Magnolia. Offenhauser and Company Insurance has been an integral part of South Arkansas for over 138 years by providing quality insurance coverage including home, auto, business, health, and specialty insurance from the finest carriers with an in-house claims department and the very best of service. Offenhauser is proud to help sponsor SAU Mule Rider Sports. Offenhauser and Company Insurance. Offices in Texarkana, Atlanta, Mount Pleasant, San Antonio, and Austin, Texas. Your insurance leader since 1882. That's right. The pitch low for ball one. Okay, I was going to say it. It was close. Oh, I, I don't want him to call any strikes. Same here. I, I'm fine walking in six runs. The 1 0. -oh. That one in the dirt. There is somebody walking out towards the Washburn bullpen. Does not appear to be in a hurry. And. Yeah, I think there is a catcher down there as well, so we may start seeing a little bit of activity. The 2-0, swing and a miss. Connor Allen was trying to cut into this lead with one swing, and yeah, they're going to get some action going in the Ichabod bullpen. Babcock's pitch, that one drilled the foul. Allen hit the light pole on that one, and that one was struck soundly. But the count goes to two balls, two strikes. 
If he could line that one up, the Riders would be in good shape to start this inning. The 2-2 foul tip. Catcher tried to hang on but could not. As Connor Allen stays alive. Umpire going to wipe the plate off and make sure the catcher, Bay, has a second to make sure all of his extremities are functioning correctly. You're not old enough to remember Steve Carlton, lefty. No, I know him. I did not I did not see him play. This guy's pitching like him. The 2-2 two, two outside. Count goes full. I think the Washburn fans wanted that call. It was kind of like the Mule Rider fans griping about the balk. Did not have a lot of substance to the objection. Full count pitch up, and there's a leadoff walk to start the bottom of the eighth inning. Well, that's a start. Need some more base runners. Need more runners? How about a hit? Let's just get a hit against this guy. That make me feel better. Riley Yours, just the man for the job. He is two for three. Scored two runs. Also left the ballpark in the third inning. That was his seventh home run on the season. Lefty versus righty matchup here. Babcock comes set, comes home, and takes a little bit off that one as Orr is out in front. That was one of the worst, worst trades in St. Louis Cardinal history when they traded away. Steve Carlson to the Phillies. They got a decent pitcher, but he didn't. He wasn't. He was no. No, Steve, no he was yeah. no Steve Carlton the rest of his career. Babcock a look over at first comes home. That one in the dirt. Good job by Bay to block that one out in front. As Connor Allen has to stay put on first base. Now, I was more the uh, Phillies were in the, uh, see, Darren Dalton, tail end of Mike Schmidt's career, Mitch Williams, uh, Dykstra was there. That one in the dirt, and Allen off with the pitch, and he is in safely as Bay does a good job of just keeping that one in front, but he had no shot at getting Allen, and he was off with the pitch regardless of whether or not Bay gloved it cleanly or not. The ball was in the dirt and it kind of it went over toward Riley. So as the catcher was trying to pick it up, he, he kind of ran into Riley and Riley was trying to get out of the way, but it just kind of came his direction and umpire ruled no interference. Who else was on that team? Kurt Schilling. They won at least one championship, I think. John I remember Krupp. Schilling's bloody sock. Well, that was with Boston. Yeah. yeah. This has been early in his career. He was a decent pitcher. Yeah. 2-1. He was a lefty, too, wasn't he? I think so. I think that one was. in the dirt. Bay again blocks it. 3-1 and one is the count. Connor Allen at second base for SAU. On deck for the Mule Riders is the leadoff man, Chris Sutton. Mule Riders trailing by a score of 10-5, trying to make things interesting here late in game one. Give us another base runner here. Exactly. A long look in by Babcock. It's the sign. Gives a look out towards second. Now gives a second look. That one outside. And back-to-back -back walks to start the bottom of the eighth inning. And that will bring Chris Sutton, the SAU leadoff man, to the plate. And it looks like we're going to have definitely a bound visit with the catcher. Catcher Bay is going to call the entire infield in. Now they got some activity, but I don't think don't, he's... I, well, I'm uh, kind of afraid to get my hopes up too much because he, he walked the first two batters in the fourth and then came, came back and took care of the Mule Riders one, two, three, and he hit a batter to lead off the sixth inning and came back and get him one, two, three, and so I don't know. Yeah, they've given the sign that he's ready. Let's see if they're going to make the change. It's number 35, Dalton Huggins. Even though he's walked two 
three batters in a row, I'd be very happy if they changed pitchers here. They're going to make the call. Yeah, they there are. it is. Yeah, so we'll tell you about the new pitcher after this. Bottom of the eighth inning. Two men on, nobody out. And Washburn's making another call to the bullpen. Washburn leading SAU by a score of 10 to 5. You're listening to the Old Rider Baseball. Stay healthy in 2022 with Doctors Chambliss and Davis. They see patients of all ages from newborn to elderly. They also do primary care, weight loss management, DOT physicals, cool sculpting, BioT hormone physicals, and more. They're open Monday through Thursdays from 8 till 4 and Fridays 8 till noon. The office of Chambliss and Davis is now accepting new patient applications with most insurances accepted, including United Healthcare. Follow Doctors Chambliss and Davis on Facebook for details. Doctors Chambliss and Davis, 1701 East North Street in Magnolia. Become one of the many satisfied patients who use Prince Pharmacy in Magnolia. Refilling your prescriptions is easy with Prince Pharmacy's new mobile app. You can also refill or transfer prescriptions on their new website, PrincePharmacyRx.com. Prince Pharmacy still has their 24 hour refill line too. Call 234 7292 anytime. Prince Pharmacy also has a convenient drive through and free delivery in the Magnolia city limits. See how they make a difference at Prince Pharmacy and the Southern. Medical Group Clinic at 211 East Stadium in Magnolia. Minute Maid slushies are back at McDonald's. And if you want to thank me for that info with the slushie, that's cool. It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. Treat yourself to a refreshing Minute Maid slushie, a pink lemonade, or strawberry watermelon. Goes great with a fresh beef quarter pounder with cheese or the new crispy chicken sandwich. Pay to McDonald's for a limited time. Fresh beef available at most restaurants in contiguous U.S. Not available in Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories. And Washburn goes back to the bullpen, and they are not messing around. Going to Dalton Huggins, left-handed reliever. 5'11", 170 pound, 170 pound senior out of Topeka, Kansas by way of Pratt Community College. And pretty impressive numbers. He has a 5-1 record, a 3.82 ERA. This will be his 29th appearance. Leads the Ichabod, Ichabods and saves with five. 68 and one-thirds innings pitched. He's given up 59 hits, 29 earned runs, only 16 walks versus 84 strikeouts. If he's their closer, he probably did pitch too many innings. He had one start this year. One start. But he's got, uh, this is the 54th game for Washburn in his 29th appearance. So, But he's coming into a jam here. Now he still has a five-run lead spotted to him. He inherits two base runners. Got Connor Allen at second base. You got Riley Orr at first. Both reached by a walk. And top of the lineup and Chris Sutton at the plate for SAU. Huggins comes set. Curve ball that catches the inside corner for strike one. At least he's not 6'5". Last two pitchers they've thrown has been 6'5". But unfortunately, with the look of that hook we just saw. Yeah, pretty wicked. Uh, yeah, that's, that's nasty stuff there. No balls, one strike the count. Again, pitch another curveball. That one stays outside. He uses the count one ball, one strike. They've stayed in the 30s with their pitchers. 34, Casey Stewart, the starter. 33, Braden Babcock, the first reliever. And then Dalton Huggins, number 35, their closer. Huggins really not paying a lot of attention to the base runners here. More, much more focused on the hitter. He does give a look towards second fastball. That one fouled up, and it's going to get out of play over in the area of the kids' baseball game over there. It's been a night for the left-handers. The left-handed pitchers have been pretty tough here, here tonight with uh, Babcock, Huggins now, and Hable. Of course, Hable has done a good job say, do in relief uh, of Adorno. To, to keep it where it was, but the Neil Riders just have not been able to come back and score runs. 
Well, and again, we talked about Hayball and not exhausting the bullpen. That's That's been huge. The pitch outside, two and two, is the count. Still nobody out. Mule Riders set up here to make things interesting. Let's see if they can capitalize. I think it was back in the fourth inning. First two Mule Riders reached via a walk and unable to make it hurt. Trying to turn the tables on that here. The 2-2 pitch inside, and that hit Sutton, and that will load the bases. I think that one stung a little bit more than the one he took off the foot earlier, but... Say, both of them have hit hit him down low. There were low pitches that came in and got him. That's back-to-back times. He's been hit by a pitch that loads the bases for SAU. Connor Allen at third, Raleigh Orr at second, now Chris Sutton at first base. And it is Mule Rider catcher Brett McGee that steps to the plate with bases loaded. Nobody out. Yeah, Washburn has their closer on the mound. Come on, Brett. This is a big spot. Again, Mule Rider's trailing 10 to 5. This would be a significant opportunity. McGee at the plate. Brandon Nickel is on deck. And Jacob Machuca in the hole. Lefty versus lefty matchup. He stands in, as always. Gets close to that plate and crowds it. The pitch looked to be low. It is a called strike one. Does look more slider than curveball. He was across when it came across the plate. It was kind of going down. He, he got a pretty wicked curveball. Looks like a couple of variations of it, too. Yeah. The 0-1 pitch as Huggins comes set. Uh, pitch swing and a miss. That was in the dirt. It was a fastball. And McGee tried to take the sand wedge out but couldn't make contact. He is now down in the count 0-2. See if he chokes up on the bat, finds some way to put the ball ball in play or get on base. Steps out, Mule Rider fans cheering him on. He was kind of showing his frustration. I think they're trying to lift his spirits a little bit. Yeah. Hoping for a good result. Huggins comes set. That one in the dirt. Bay literally... Does a full body jump on top of the ball to keep it in front of him. One ball, two strikes the count. Bases loaded, nobody out. Wind is really picked up, blowing out towards center. Yeah, Cut that flag whipping pretty good out there. Get one in the air. Long look in. From the pitcher, Huggins shakes off the first two signals from his catcher, Bay. Gets one that he likes as he comes set at the letters. Pitch inside, and that one almost hit McGee. Does even the count two to two as Bay again able to block it and keep the ball in front. Almost hit him going one way, and then, yeah. then in the dirt, and came back and back got him again. They had to kind of dance out of the way. How about a base hit here? Extra bases, anything. Just keep the keep the line moving. I'm going to close my eyes. Tell me what happens. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing the same thing. Two balls, two strikes. Huggins again comes set. Comes home, swing to miss for strike three. There is now one out in the inning as the bases remain loaded. I wish he got a pitch to hit, just unable to make contact there. Brandon Nickel, yeah, the middle rider, third baseman, third comes base to the plate. Nickel. <clears throat> Nickel with a pair of RBIs. Sack fly and a single back in the second inning, walked in the fourth, struck out in the sixth. The 
Nickel stands in. Nickel in the season does have 11 home runs. Pitch low for ball one. Just one good swing of the bat. This will be a one-run ball game. Would like to set it up where a solo shot could tie it. Again, that wind is really blowing out towards center, left center. One oh, that one's drilled over the shortstop's hand. That's going to score at least one. Allen comes around to score. Riley Orr comes around to score. They're going to hold Sutton at third, and it is a two RBI double as Brandon Nickel just laced that one into left center field. Excellent job there. So the Buell Riders now trail by only three, still have two men on base, both of them in scoring position and only one out. We're going to have a pinch hitter. That's going to be Jacob Martinez coming in for Machuca. That closes the book on, the, on Babcock. Those two walks that led off the inning both come in to score there. Well, and that's Martinez coming in the game. The Coach Pettigrew wanting that righty-lefty matchup here. So Jacob Martinez into the game for Jacob Machuca. Have to see what the Mule Riders do at first base defensively, but here trying to get the best matchup possible. And again, going righty on lefty here. There is now more action in the Washburn bullpen. Huggins comes set, comes home, took a little bit off that one, and there's a called strike one. I think a lot of times when Martinez bats the umpires overestimate his height. <laughs> I would agree. Martinez, 291 on the season for an average, has two home runs, 19 runs batted in. The 0-1, that one low and away. Even count one ball, one strike. Ty Manning on deck for SAU. Well, just a base hit here would make it a one-run one run game. game. Yeah. Yeah, you got excellent speed at first base, or excuse me, at second base with Nickel. Sutton scores easily on any kind of hit from third. Even a pass ball here, curveball that gets to the screen. Could add another run. Pitch, again, took something off of it, and Martinez could not pull the trigger. He's down to the count, one ball, two strikes. After the game, our Farm Bureau postgame show, talk to your local Farm Bureau insurance agents, Mike Jones, Stephen Zorsch, Jeff Hansen, and Brett Blair. Love to help you out with all of your insurance needs. Huggins looking for his second strikeout of the inning. One, two, inside, and that one actually ended up jumping up into the arms of Martinez. <laughs> Catcher couldn't find it. That's because it was kind of stuck between the elbow and armpit of Martinez at home plate. So I couldn't for find it either. Yeah, you looking for this? <laughs> Count goes to two and I was wondering where it was myself. I yeah. didn't see. Yeah, he, was he just dropped it. Rolling around on the ground. You rider fans get coming to life as Huggins shakes off the first sign from his catcher bay. The 2-2. Two -two. Inside. Count goes full. Boy, big pitch here. I know we've said there have been a lot of big pitches in this game, but that's kind of amplified as we're here in the eighth inning. Your Riders trailing by score 10 to 7. Runners on second and third, one out, full count. Jacob Martinez at the plate for SAU. The pitch off speed and high, and the bases are again loaded. And it will be Ty Manning coming to the plate. Bases loaded, one out. So the tying run is now at first base for the Mule Riders. Boy, so many times the Mule Riders have had runners on base in this game, but have not gotten that big hit. 
Let's see what they can do here against uh, the closer, Huggins. They're going to have a visit to the mound. Have another mound visit. And I think that's the, I don't know what that is. But anyway, they're going to call all the infielders in to have the conference. Who's going to be our People's Bank player of the game? Listen in after the game and find out. People's Bank thanks you for voting them best bank, best mortgage company, and best mobile banking app for 2021 and the Banner News Readership Poll. People's Bank appreciates your confidence. We'll continue to earn your trust with every transaction every day. People's Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. It appears the conference at the mound is over. And Just starting to get ready out there in the bullpen, but uh, this, is, I mean, this is their closer. Yeah, this is this is their guy. Sometimes just seeing somebody different out there will, will ignite you a little bit. Well, that wind is really whipping out to center now. Bases loaded, one out. Mule Riders trailing by a score of 10 to 7, bottom of the eighth inning. The closer, Dalton Huggins, the pitcher for Washburn, Ty Manning at the plate. Uh, pitch that one hit out towards right field that one's trouble and that one is down diving catch is not there that's going to score at least two runs and the mule riders have made this a 10-9 game the right fielder bowling made a diving attempt so the mule riders had to hold to see if the catch was going to be made it is not as the ball kicks away from bowling so a two rbi double makes this a 10-9 ball game Two more SAU Mule Riders in scoring position. Still only one out as the Mule Rider designated hitter Tucker Burton comes to the plate. Owen came within an eyelash and making an incredible catch out there in the gap in right center field. And just got away from him and then center fielder then has to go run back for it as he kind of knocked it toward left or toward center. Tucker Burton one for three. Lefty versus lefty matchup. Jacob Martinez at third. Ty Manning at second. SAU trailing by one. Huggins comes set. Off oh, speed. That one lifted towards center field. That's got a chance. That's hit deep, and it is good. Tucker Burton gives the Mule Riders the lead. A three-run bomb to straightaway center, and the Mule Riders have scored all the way back and taking a 12-10 lead over the Ichabods as Burton is getting the SAU fans and team fired up. His second home run of the night. SAU leading 12-10. That was a bomb. Bottom of the eighth inning. Lefty versus lefty matchup, and Burton sent that one out of the yard, and I think we have our leader in the clubhouse for player of the game, but there is still work left to do. But again, you know, they, they make a pitching change. The Babcock had the Mule Riders number. He didn't, granted, he walked the lead the first two batters to start the inning, but Mule Riders couldn't touch him as far as hitting, and so they make a change, and I think, again, Mule Riders, wow. they see something different out there, and they're hitting this guy. The pitch to Lyles. Lyles is the ninth SAU Mule Rider to bat in the inning. Again, still only one out. Mule Riders have struck for seven runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Next pitch, that one hit over towards short. Sunday hop as the shortstop throws across and retires Lyles, who said he was safe. It was sure close. It was. Anyway, they're now two out. Six to three. I guarantee you that that was that, that young man can run. Yeah, he got down that line in a hurry. SAU has struck for seven runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now lead by a score of 12 to 10. Connor Allen comes to the plate. Base is clear, two out. Again, everybody trying to recover from that three-run go-ahead home run from Tucker Burton. First pitch from Huggins is a cold strike. I don't have the stats against righty or lefty, but. Coach Pettigrew mentioned earlier this season that Connor Allen has a very good average against lefties. Well, he took a very healthy swing there, but he's now down in the count. No balls, two strikes. Well, he doesn't have a hit against one here tonight yet, so 
He's due, right? It's 0 for 1 with a walk. How about another insurance run? The pitch off speed as Allen holds up. One ball, two strikes. That one was per perilously close to falling in the strike zone anyway. One, two, the count. Connor Allen hitting for the second time this inning. Pitch, that one lifted out towards shallow right field. That could be troubles. First baseman's going out. That's going to fall. And Allen hit it into the Bermuda Triangle out there in short right field as the second baseman, first baseman, and right fielder all converge, but no one can get there. So there's a two-out group single for Connor Allen. Yeah, no, nobody could call the other guys no. up because just nobody could get there. It was just, just out of reach for all three of them. Riley Orr, the Mule Rider shortstop, comes to the plate. Riley's already left the yard once. We can... And he has hit the ball hard. Had a line drive single, hit the home run. Had a pretty deep fly off to center. Walked and scored a run. He's actually scored three runs. The pitch is Orr squares to Bunt, takes the ball outside. Gunner Allen got Allen. a bluff to run there, almost fell down. Well, I think he was going to go, and then I think he lost his footing. In fact, he lost his shoe. He just had to put his oh, okay. the, the heel came out of his shoe there. But he had some that good breaks. Could have been an impediment. The 1 0 pitch, late swing by Riley Orr. That one's past him. One ball, one strike, the count. How about another? I would agree. Decent lead by Allen at first. Huggins comes home, curveball low. I have SAU in the 13-run pool, so we need one more. <laughs> I don't care as long as the SAU score is higher than the Washburn score. Chris Sutton on deck for SAU. If four can extend the inning, he bunts it down the third base side. It's a good one. Third, third base for Bear hands it. Has no play. Riley Orr, a perfectly executed bunt single down the third base line. And again, Ingram came charging in but had absolutely no shot. Well done by the Mule Rider shortstop. And they had to hustle, get somebody over to third base with him charging yeah. to make sure that uh, Allen wasn't going to come around to third. Now, now Sutton's got an RBI opportunity. Yeah, Chris Sutton, last two trips to the plate, he's been hit by a pitch. He has scored two runs tonight, officially one for three. Huggins still in the game for Washburn. Huggins, a couple looks out at second, comes home. That one hit off the end of the bat towards the SAU dugout, just right off the cap. I bet that left a dent. That thing just a cue shot over to the, toward the New Rider dugout. He checked, make sure the end of that bat didn't pop loose. No balls, one strike for the Mule Rider second baseman. I don't think the end of the bats are metal anymore, are they? They got all those plastic plugs yeah. and all that in them. Well, I think they're kind of going back to the metal end, but the pitch, that one outside. One ball, one strike. <laughs> I don't know if that was a sarcastic Ric Flair, woo, or a legitimate one. Nonetheless, one ball, one strike. You even know who Ric Flair is. Who? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know I know who he is. I know, I'm not a wrestling fan. Oh, man. One ball, one strike. Swing and a miss. Sutton way out in front of that pitch. Yeah, if you were a wrestling fan, you would know it was wrestling. It's the hey, co I correct it. pronunciation. I saw it back when Harley Race and some of those guys were wrestling. I didn't even know those guys, do No. <laughs> do not. One ball, two strikes. The pitch swing to miss for strike three. But SAU strikes for seven runs off of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five hits in the inning. There were no errors, two left on base as we hit at the top of the ninth inning. SAU leading Washburn by a score of 12 to 10. You're listening to Bill Rider Baseball. KVMZ FM. 
Waldo, Magnolia. Short-term plans may change, but stay focused on three lifetime goals. Planning for retirement, preparing for the unexpected, and creating an estate plan. Get in touch with one of Magnolia's Edward Jones Financial Advisors, Edward Jones, member SIPC. The Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place are located in the heart of Magnolia, Arkansas. Wentworth offers award-winning services. Their cottages are homes large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 elders with private rooms and complete baths surrounding a shared living room, open kitchen, dining area, and spa. They recognize the importance of performing our jobs with compassion and providing comfort physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Celebrate National Nurse Home Week with the Greenhouse Cottages of Wentworth Place. Visit cottagesofwentworthplace.com. Whether in a crowded gym, in the bleachers at the ball field, or sitting under the Friday night lights, South Arkansas is all about tradition. Since 1903, our tradition at Bob Call Bank has been to create lasting relationships with our customers and community partners. Local traditions, local leadership, and local decisions. At Bob Call Bank, we are your local team, and we are committed to you and our community. Bob Call Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Is there one place I can go for all my car, truck, and SUV needs? One place for all kinds of repairs, tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, oil changes, tires, etc., etc.? Well, yes, there is. Spitler Tire and Auto. You've been trusting Spitler Tire and Auto for 15, 16 years now, and they're still working hard for you. Call to set up an appointment to get your ride into one of their 10 service bays, and it'll be back to peak performance in no time. Spitler Tire and Auto in the Dairy Queen Shopping Center, 521 East Main in Magnolia. Well, Mule Rider's going with the new pitcher, Isaiah Heaton's comes on for SAU 511, 195-pound sophomore out of Katy, Texas. Comes on for Mule Riders, trying to get the final three outs. Had a 5.40 ERA. This is his ninth appearance. All in relief. Team with three saves, 13 and a third innings pitch, giving up 10 hits, 10 runs, eight earned, has walked eight, struck out 22. Opponents batting 208 against Isaiah Haynes. First man he faces, Zion Bolin, and he hits one in the air out to center field. Manning says, I got it. Out number one. I would be perfectly fine if they hit two more to Tom Manning out in center field. The hitter will be Tyler Clark Caparelli. And Easton Bruce should be on deck. He is. Boy, well, the way the bats for the Ichabods were going early, you still can't can't fall asleep at the wheel right now. Nope. The pitch to Chaps is in there for a strike. Start him off, and, and uh, Haynes can throw hard. He can start him off with some off-speed stuff there. No balls, one strike. Haynes with another. And pulled down the third baseline, headed for the corner. That'll be extra bases. Rounds first on his way to second. Get it back in quickly from out in left field. So a one-out double for Clark Chaparelli. Yeah, we should also point out you got uh, Will Richardson in at first base for SAU. You had Martinez come in to pinch hit for Machuca, so put Will Richardson in at first. Looks like he's in the same spot where Martinez was because that's still Lyles out and left. Well, one on, one out. And again, this one this long is the, ways from over, yeah, unfortunately. This is the potential tying run coming to the plate here in Easton Bruce. Haynes pitch. Fastball. There's a strike. I don't know if my nerves can take this. I, was, I thought I was nervous before when they were trailing now. <laughs> yeah. Probably twice as, uh, as nervous with them having the lead. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Got Easton Bruce set up. How about your first strike out of this game, young man? That was five very healthy innings of work for Hayden Hable for SAU. Absolutely. 
The 0-2 pitch for Hayes. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Bruce. Got some high heat. Couldn't catch up. The Hickamods down to their last out. Cross the bay. The catcher for the Ichabods to the plate. They still got home run power. He's got five on the season, and the wind is again picked up out towards center. He's got he's been on base three of the four times he's come up tonight. Once by a single, once by an error, and once by a walk. 12 to 10 SAU. We're in the uh, excuse me, the top of the ninth. Your Riders, the home team. Hoping they don't have to bat in the bottom of this ninth inning. Need to get one more out, though. Cross Bay at the plate. The pitch. Fastball. Outside ball one. There have been 24 hits in this game and 22 runs. Your Riders. Your Riders kind of kept us on the edge of our seat. It's pretty good. Mild yeah. leg. Got theirs late. 1-0 pitch on the way. Fastball. That's a strike on the outside corner. May did not like that. He thought it was outside and may have gotten a little bit of an inch or two off the plate there on the strike call. A ball and a strike to Bay. Connor Scott on deck open to get an at bat for the, the Ichabods. The pitch from Haynes. Fastball. Right same spot. Strike two. Hayes complained about it both times. I think if Haynes would go back there again, he'll get the call again. I would do it. Hey, it's worked twice. Why not? To nail this thing down. One ball, two strikes to cross Bay. Steps back in the box. Isaiah Hines stretches. He delivers. Fastball. Foul back. He got a piece of it. It's the second time his bottom hand has not been able to stay on the bat. He's going to get a little pine tar. Flying off. Whatever's on that stick. A one ball, two strike count to cross bay. Isaiah Haynes, third pitcher of the game for Southern Arkansas. SAU up 12 to 10. Top of the ninth. They need to get one more out. Haynes set. Here's his pitch. Swing and a little flare off to the right side. That's going to go out of play. Well, that's a lazy foul ball. That was a last millisecond swing there by Bay. So we'll do that one-two pitch once again. Bay batting 239 on the season. is set. Looks back at second. Now to the plate. Fastball upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, McGee telling his pitcher to calm down a little bit. Got the feeling he may have tried to overthrow that one and missed his spot. McGee set up outside. That one was well inside. Nickel is not going to let one get past him on the third baseline over there. Yeah, he is deep at third and he is very close to the line. Yeah, no, no doubles here. Two balls, two strikes. Haynes delivers. Woo! It was close. Wow. Could not get the call from the home plate umpire. Goes to three and two. Looked like maybe a little down and in, but that boy, that was close. Aye. He gave Haynes the outside pitches or the outside edge. Did not get him down and in. Full count. Wow. Okay. Remember that pitch. Yes. Haynes delivers once again. That's chopped up the middle, and that's going to get through for a base hit. That will drive in a run. Throw will come in to second to keep that runner bay at first base. Yeah, that's the important run. Keep the man at first, and you're right. That turns out to be a big pitch. RBI single makes it a one-run game. Puts the tie and run on base. Potential yeah, pinch runner. That's going to be number six. Six, Trevor McCollum, I'm assuming a little more speed than the catcher Bay has. So 
Yeah, he'll be over there at first now. So he got So one on, two out. Connor Scott, their center fielder, to bat. The tying run at first base. Haynes pitch. It's a little low for ball one. One more out. That's all we need. That's it. So close. We did one more strike a little earlier and couldn't get the call. I'm not sure we didn't have that strike. Big lead over at first. The 1 0 pitch is high. Ball two. Come on, Isaiah. Yeah, we've got to focus here. Looking at the top of the lineup after Scott. Again, a big lead over at first. Kind of walking off there. Getting a pretty good sized lead. 2-0 pitch from Haynes is high ball three. Again, it looks like he may be overthrown yeah. a little bit. Just... Has it really been close on his three pitches to the number nine hitter? Boy, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get back to the top of this order. But we may we may do just that. It's three balls, no strikes. Haynes pitch. There's a strike. Strike taking all the way on that one. I suspect he may be taking all the way on 3-1. Looks like he took a little off of that pitch, maybe. To yeah, just to get me get it over. So 3-1 now the count to Connor Scott. Cal Watkins, their leadoff hitter, is on deck. The 3-1 delivery from Haynes popped up to the right side. That should get out of play. It will. Little guy. Well, no, I thought, okay, that wasn't worth our but That was a different ball. The little guy's throwing up over here. Battled back. Full count. All right. Need one more strike. I say uh, Haynes. Scott steps. Well, he's about ready to step back in the box after uh, Haynes checks his wristband. Now, Scott back in. Right-handed hitting center fielder. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. He checked his swing, they'll appeal. No. Oh, ball four. Wow. One, I thought it was a strike. It, again, they're just not getting the letters. The letter high strike. And again, McGee thought he swung. He appeals down to first. And you can tell he was not happy with the safe call. Coach Adam Anderson, SAU pitching coach, going out. Haynes missing high with those with those fastballs. So he's going to talk to his pitcher, and he's going to talk to the infield as well as they bring them all in. And they got runners at first and second now with two out. Yeah, you got the tying run in scoring position. So, again, that's a pinch runner. You've got to assume any hit to the outfield is they're going to try to score him. Say McCollum, he knows he's got to have the speed out there. Yeah, they wouldn't have put him in otherwise. He's out there stretching at second base. And you got Cal Watkins coming to the plate. Officially one for three. Well, it's 12-11. Man, Southern Arkansas here in the top of the ninth inning. That was the, uh, the 12th hit. Earlier for the the one from from Bay, they've got had two hits in this inning and a walk. So two on, two out. Runners at first and second. Watkins at the plate. The pitch. There's a fastball in for a strike. Two more. Two more. Watkins hits from the left side. He's their leadoff hitter. Another pitch from Haynes on the way. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Blew a fastball past it. Again, down to the last strike. 
One more. <laughs> Can't get that last strike. Need it here. Ah, oh, the toughest one to get. Come on. No balls, two strikes to Cal Watkins. Haynes is set. Here's his pitch, and it's high. It's one and two. That may have been high by design. Man, yeah. Up and away. Try to get him to reach. Took a little off. All right, put him in the book right here. Ball and two strikes to Cal Watkins. Isaiah Haynes, third pitcher of the day for the Muir Riders on the mound. His one-two pitch on the way. Take it in. Stand on strikes, and that's the Muir Rider winner. Southern Arkansas advances on day one of the Central region tournament here in magnolia it does so in dramatic fashion both on the offensive side and defensive side tucker burton to go ahead three run bomb and then a good job isaiah haynes making it a little interesting in the top of the ninth he's able to get the job done swinging strikeout your riders man what what a game i, I can't take i can't take another two or three of these games it was <laughs> Wait here, Roy, just for the Muir Riders, and then the Ichabods didn't want to give up. And, oh, man, what a, what a finish to this one. But Muir Riders come back, take the lead, and they hang on for the win here in the Central Region Tournament in Magnolia. 12 to 11 is our final, and we've got our Farm Bureau postgame show coming your way. This is Muir Rider Baseball in Magnolia's country, 99.1. Big day of closet organizing, toddler yoga, scavenger hunts, jigsaw puzzling, and sledding down the stairs. Get Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box. Two medium, one topping pizzas, five breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. The Big Dinner Box, from our hut to yours. Ask for contactless and curbside. Availability of contactless curbside delivery areas, charges, and minimums vary. Delivery charge non tip. This week's At Your Service featured item, cotton and rayon mop heads. These mop heads are high quality and have an ultra-absorbent design. Mops have clamp or screw ends. Handles sold separately. Come by and see the At Your Service team today. At Your Service Environmental Solutions, where they know the power of clean. 1506 North Vine in Magnolia. Or visit atyourservicestores.com. better than a helping hand. How about one you can actually shape? At Farm Bureau Insurance, that's exactly what you get. There's a local agent like me in every county, and we're passionate about helping our local communities thrive. For me, it's more than a job. It's a calling. I'm Steven Zorsch. Call me at 234-1966 for an auto, home, or life insurance quote and learn more about how Farm Bureau Insurance can save you time and money. That's Steven Zorsch at 234-1966. Welcome back on our Farm Bureau postgame show. Farm Bureau's deductible rewards program rewards their safe drivers with earning percentage credits on their deductibles. The only rewards program of its kind in the state. To learn more, go to afbic.com slash drive down and talk to your local Farm Bureau insurance agents, Brett Blair, Jeff Hansen, Stephen Zorsch, and Mike Jones for all of your insurance needs. Well, Southern Arkansas with uh, 12 runs on 13 hits, three errors, and 10 men left on base for SAU. 11 runs for the, uh, for the Ichabods on 12 hits, no errors. They left eight men on base in this one here this evening. Check. Uh, we'll get the box score for you. For you here in a little bit, let me let me see if I can uh, get over here to the uh, to the SAU stats. Starting pitcher for the Muir Riders, Jeremy Adorno, went three innings, gave up nine hits, nine runs. Six of those were earned. He walked three and struck out ten. That'll be a little easier to uh, to read, Coach. Let me get us a little light in here. We can we can read it. Coach Justin Pettigrew joins us here. Coach, whew, that's uh, how's your how's your heart? Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> that's good frustrations early you know but 
one of those things where it's it's nice to win a game when your ace doesn't have his stuff and you know you roll a true freshman out there you know in the biggest game he's ever pitched in and he goes out there and gives up one run over i don't know five i guess it was or four i can't even remember i mean looking at stats right here so five you know and then of course haynes comes in and does a great job you know i felt like we threw the strike three a little earlier you know in that inning and you know didn't get it didn't get the call and you know, he overcame it and made some big pitches there at the end. And then, of course, you can't say enough about our offense. Uh, just plugging early, you know, and then the lefty was tough on us, you know, through the middle of the game. And then, of course, the big seven spot, just continuing to grind at bats, getting big at bats, big hits. And then, of course, Tucker with the big one to, you know, to put us ahead. And you, you had opportunities in the game. We were, were you less runners on base in the game? Just couldn't get that big hit. But, uh, well, you got enough of them in the eighth inning to make up for it. Yeah, we did. And that was the frustrating part is, you know, don't get me wrong, we got an outstanding job, and he had good numbers, you know, coming into it, and we knew he was going to be a quality arm. But felt like we, you know, swung out of the zone a little too much and kind of got him out of, you know, innings instead of him earning the outs. Um, you know, have a couple really good at-bats, you know, and then all of a sudden one at-bat where we don't do what we're supposed to do and it breaks the chain. And, you know, fortunate enough that, you know, we came alive in the eighth inning, obviously, and, you know, strung together a lot of good at-bats there. I, and I don't know the first thing about coaching, so I'm going to ask you this question, but it just, you got a guy like they had, their, the second pitcher for them, Braden Babcock, came on, and he was doing, doing an outstanding job for them. Walks two batters, and all of a sudden they they go to their closer. And I know it's it's their closer, but still, that that guy that guy had been tough on your hitters. Yeah, he had been, and it's one of those where I mean, people probably watch. You know, if if you're Washburn, they're probably sitting there watching, going, "Man, why are they starting this guy in game one?" You know, on a Dorno. You know, so yeah, yeah. you go with who got you here. You yeah. know, obviously a Dorno didn't have his best stuff, and obviously you know they bring in the lefty closer and. You know, we were fortunate enough to touch him up, and that's just baseball. That's all there is to it. And, you know, sometimes guys have great stuff, sometimes they don't, and sometimes it's in between. We were fortunate enough that our mistakes were in the front of the game and their mistakes were at the back of the game. Yeah. That's why you play it. That's why you don't play it on paper, right? You play it yeah. on the field because, you know, it's a game of baseball. Things can happen. You know, you can you can have errors. You can have, uh, you know, one one time you uh, you just miss that uh, a pitch by a sixteenth of an inch or whatever. And, and other times, like uh, like Tucker did a couple of times tonight, yeah. you, you nail it pretty good. Yeah, and that was it was good to see from him, especially against the lefty, you know, with breaking balls and everything. It, the first one, of course, was a no-doubter, and then, you know, he kind of gave in on the lefty earlier when he flew out to left. I think it was like a 2-1 count or something like that, and he flew out to left and kind of gave in a little bit. And, you know, the good thing about him is we know he's going to fight and grind at bats, and, you know, he worked his butt off to get a good pitch to hit and put on a good swing. But it it was carried with, you know, J-Mart's big, at bay, you know, pinch hit, or, you know, and, and drawing the walk and then tie getting off a good swing and, you know, nickel before that and so on. It was, I mean, you could name a bunch of guys in that inning that did exactly what they needed to do, and that gave him the opportunity to do what he's supposed to do as well, and that's why he's in the, you know, in top of the conference as far as home runs and region, and, you know, he's been a great play, player for us and hit a lot of big ones, you know, in big moments, but I don't know if any of them have been bigger than that. No, I don't think so, but, you know, you're, you you got a team, but what were you down, 10-5, I think, yeah, I at think that so. point, something like that coming into that inning, but, uh, you know, We've, how many times have we seen the Mirror Riders have a big inning? And yeah. You know it's always a possibility. Well, and the thing is, you, as a coach, you know it was in the back of their head a little bit just because they had a big lead against Central Missouri, you know, in the MIAA tournament. And that's what I kept telling our guys, like, keep applying pressure, keep applying pressure, doubt will creep in, you know. And um, I'm not saying that doubt crept in, but they've seen that before. You know, they had a big lead against Central Missouri and ended up giving it up. And, you know, so it was good for our guys to just – keep plugging, keep plugging, keep fighting, and then, you know, put up the big seven spot. Do your guys, like when they go to their closer there late in the game, do your guys just kind of kind of breathe a sigh of relief, say, you know, anybody but this guy we've been, we've been seeing out You know, there. it's one of those where, again, I, I think we've got an approach against every pitcher, and we're trying to do what we're supposed to do, you know, and it's really not based on the other guy and the other colored jersey. Um, so 
we just got to do a good job of what we're trying to do. So whether it's the starter, middle reliever, closer, you know, specialist, whatever it is, you know, we've we've got an approach that we want to execute, and you know, obviously we did a did a really good job of it there in the eighth inning. I just looked at him and I said, well, at least at least he's not six five like the last two. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but your guy, yeah, your guys, your guys, uh, I, I think they believe and they, you know, they just know they're never out of it. And, yeah, and they and and it shows again here tonight. Yeah, and again, you know, that's that's the thing. You look up and Adorno had, you know, the worst outing, you know, of his SAU career, and guys just were there to pick him up, you know, just like he's been there to pick us up all year long on the mound, and, you know, that's the, the good thing about a team, and good thing about this team is they love each other, and they, they didn't want to see, they didn't want to see him, you know, as far as this game go out like that, so they did everything they could do to get him off the hook, and they did, and then you know, took it over the hump a little bit just to get the win as well. Jeremy ran back to the locker room at one point and had a towel over his head. So I know he was embarrassed by it, but yeah, but but, but hey, hey, he, you know, he's human like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, he is, I and mean, that that's the thing. He's he's been due for one of those outings. You know, you hate that it was right now, but you know, when he was down in the zone, they didn't do anything. When he was up in the zone, they did damage. And uh, you know, we just got to be a bit, little bit better down in the zone and and go to work. And you know, we got to get a good start tomorrow. And you know continue to build offensive momentum off of what we did in the eighth inning. Well, Hayden Habel kept it right where it was and, 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 and until your guys were, were ready for that big inning. Yeah, it's good to see and that's the thing. He's His stuff is there, you know, and, and that's you know that's why we went to him. It was one where we're sitting there and we're like, okay, we need to change. They're, you know, they're, they're hitting our best righty, so let's throw a lefty at him and see what happens, yeah. you know, and his ball moves like crazy and you know, if he's locating the ball in the strike zone, which, I mean, he was tonight. I mean, you look up and five innings, one hit, you know, unearned run with that, you know, and he kind of, you know, made a mistake. Didn't make a mistake on the play on the bunt because that's where we should have went with second base. But, you know, just throwing it wide of the bag, you know, and go a little self-inflicted wound from him. But he was able to overcome it and continue to put goose eggs up there and, you know, allow our offense to work. Well, Coach, we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Yep, 6 o'clock again. All right, hey, see you tomorrow. Your Rider Nation, 6 o'clock, loud and proud. I want to see everybody out. Yeah, we've had a tough night. We still had a good crowd. Oh, graduation crowd, yeah. night at the high school. The crowd, crowd was awesome. Awesome. Uh, we didn't, give them, a whole, we didn't give them a whole lot to cheer about early in the game, but they were rocking late in the game, and it was. I knew that's exactly the way they would be. And, you know, I wish we would have done a little bit better, you know, where they could have had something to cheer about the entire game, but I know they'll be back out tomorrow night. Right. Ready hey, to we, got the, we got the W. That's yes, right. exactly. Take two more just like it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach Justin Pettigrew joining us uh, here after the game again, the final 12-11, Southern Arkansas, and the Mew Riders now 42-11 and on the season as Washburn drops to 33-21. and It ain't over for anybody as Washburn... We'll play the 2 o'clock game tomorrow against Northeastern State. And uh, that'll, that'll, again, 2 o'clock, Washburn Northeastern. Uh, Northeastern fell to Henderson State in the first game by an 11-6 to score. And now SAU then, they'll face Henderson State yet again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. we go against the Reddies again. Near Riders beat the Reddies for the championship in the Great American Conference Tournament. And uh, I don't think there's anybody, anybody the Reddies would would rather face, or maybe the Mule Riders too. Then, uh, of course, they they both want to be in that position where you're uh, where you're playing with with a win coming off of a win. Well, the and the other interesting point, the GAC went three and zero tonight. <laughs> yes, I mean that's yeah. Washington beat Central yeah. Missouri up in that's, up in Warrensburg. That's a big deal. So that makes you feel you know the the level of competition that. The uh, GAC has had all season is right now looking looking to be pretty significant based uh, again based on tonight's results. But man, what a talk about a great way to get uh, get a regional started. That was about as heart pumping as you can have for for game one. Well, let's give you give you some of the numbers from this one. I had a box score here somewhere. There we go. Uh, Southern Arkansas. Well, looking at uh, some of the. First, well, first of all, the pitching. And we kind of went over a lot of it there with Coach Pettigrew, so don't have to give you a lot. But, yeah, it just wasn't Adorno's night tonight. Three innings, gave up nine hits, nine runs. Six of those earned. He walked three, struck out four. Um, Hable, again, Hable came on, pitched five outstanding innings. Yeah. Gave up just one hit, one run, uh, two walks, uh, four strikeouts. 
So outstanding uh, effort for Habel tonight. Then Isaiah Haynes comes on and pitches the ninth inning to pick up the save, his fourth of the year. He, he gave up two hits, one run. It was earned. He walked one, and he struck out two in that ninth inning for SAU. So the winner for uh, for Southern Arkansas is Habel to go to 1-0. And Huggins, the closer for Washburn, takes the loss to fall to uh, to five and two. And I'm hoping, quite honestly, I'm hoping we don't have to face Huggins again in this tournament because uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. He's, their, he's their closer for a reason. But uh, well, the Muir Riders were uh, they, they were ready for him here tonight. Yeah, he's not, and he's not going to be off two times in a row. But yeah, Muir Riders, good job of of getting to him and just kind of scratching and clawing, getting base runners, and then of course the big boom from. Tucker Burton, but you know, again, just uh, what you got to give a, a lot of credit uh, for is just SAU hanging in there because, again, they were down all night, had opportunities, and couldn't quite get over the hill. But they just, they just kept coming, and then all of a sudden in the eighth, they were able just to bust it open, put a seven spot on the board, and that was enough for the win. So good job, just just keep grinding. Yeah, hopefully they won't wait quite so long. No, I'm not that. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we can't take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was having I was having some palpitations over here. Yeah. Uh, before that uh, before that big uh, eighth inning, the Muir Riders sent twelve men to the plate in the eighth inning and scored seven runs to come from ten five down to twelve ten up going into the ninth inning. And again, Haynes was able to get through the ninth, giving up just the one run to uh, to pick up the save. Yeah. So Muir Riders in the winners bracket, and again, don't you know? Even though Adorno didn't have the great outing. Didn't use up uh, much in the way of, of pitching, thanks to Habel's tremendous outing. And you feel like that uh, with Haynes, he didn't throw many pitches, so he's still going to be available for the weekend. Four home runs in this game for SAU. They, they had that third inning, which was the final the final inning pitched by their starter, Casey Stewart, uh, that, that the Muir Riders had three solo shots in that inning, Burton, Lyles, and Orr. And, uh, of course, then... Uh, Tucker Burton decides he's going to hit one more in that eighth inning. Why not? Well, I just might as well. <laughs> Sends one out to center field, and that's a that was a three-run bomb to go with his solo shot earlier in the game. Uh, so so I, I, I think Tucker Burton probably deserves to be people's bank player of the game, don't you? Uh, I, I would agree. We uh, kind of flirted with, with Habel, and again, yeah, he and was it, outstanding and not uh, not demeaning that at all. But when, when you have the go-ahead three-run bomb and that's your second home run of the game, then... Yeah, yeah. And, and you needed you needed Abel. You, you had to have Abel hold Washburn where they were. Correct. You couldn't get behind yeah. any further, and he did that. And then, uh, and but you also had to have that that big offensive inning, and Muir Riders were able to put it together. And again, the big blow coming from Tucker Burton in that uh, eighth inning for SAU. Nickel earlier in the inning had a had a two run double. Nickel ends up with four RBIs yeah. in the game for SAU. So he had he had a very good night offensively as well. He didn't have any home runs, but he had he had four runs batted in for the uh, the Muir Riders um, in this game. So he did well, and he and Burton. Uh, the only guys, uh, well, Manning had Manning had two RBIs, so he had multiples too. But uh, both Nickel and Burton with four runs batted in in this game. But uh, Burton, two of those were bombs, and I mean, they weren't they, they weren't just your points. your average yeah. uh, run of the mill home runs. Uh, he 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 hit them well, so he goes two for four at the plate. Uh, also a walk, those two being uh, being home runs, a solo shot, and a three-run homer. So Tucker Burton is our People's Bank Player of the Game. People's Bank will donate to the SAU Athletics Fund in the name of our Player of the Game. People's Bank, the only bank dedicated exclusively to Columbia County. People's Bank member, FDIC. 12 to 11 is the final here tonight. I thought I was going to have to go home and burn this cap. <laughs> I've had this cap several years. I have never worn it to a game. And, and I wore it out here tonight, and I said, it's the cap. It's, it's got to be the cap. I'm going to burn this cap as soon as I get home. 
I'm, I'm going to, but but now I don't have to. Not, not that we're superstitious or anything, but it was obvious. <laughs> hey, that I've, been around, I've been around uh, baseball players and coaches enough that, that it's kind of rubbing off. But it's me. obvious the blue pencil brought us through, the one I have <laughs> to have right. for my scorecard. Yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> your, your blue pencil brought us through. All right, 12-11 is our final. We've, I think we've, we, we've talked about this one enough. We, we've got to save we something gotta for tomorrow. We've got to rest up. Yeah, yeah. save something for tomorrow. So, again, 2 o'clock tomorrow is the uh, the elimination game between Northeastern State and Washburn. That's at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then the winners, Henderson State and Southern Arkansas, they square off in the 6 o'clock game tomorrow evening. And, uh, and then on Saturday, the first game will be the winners between Northeastern and Washburn against the loser between SAU and Henderson State. And then whoever wins that game will stick around and play again against uh, the winner between SAU and Henderson State. And then there's that uh, if necessary game on Sunday. Final here tonight, Southern Arkansas wins it 12 to 11 for Ryan Phillips and for Bailey Black back at the studio. I'm Dan Gregory. So long from Walker Stadium at Goodhart Field.